Throws it down. Caught by Boston College. I don't believe it. Boston, Boston College's magic moment seems like a distant dream for new head coach Tom O'Brien. The Eagles have survived a turbulent 2-2 two two start and now look to fly right the rest of the way. Georgia Tech's history is long and storied. John Heisman was the father of football at Tech. But it was the old gray fox Bobby Dodd who provided the golden era for the Yellow Jackets. Dodd's 22-year reign was highlighted by a national title in 1952. It was nearly 40 years before the Ramblin' Wreck added another page to its annals with a national crown in 1990. Now it's a new team and a new era as Tech looks to return to the glory of years past. Georgia Tech and Boston College. It's NASDAQ College Football on CBS. Welcome, college football fans, to Boston, Massachusetts. You're looking at the world-famous Boston Common under cloudy skies now. And about 15 minutes south of the city of Boston, we're at Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets from the ACC and the Boston College Eagles of the Big East. And here come the Eagles of Boston College. Led by their head coach, Tom O'Brien, for the record of 2-2 two and two overall, 2-1 two and one in the Big East. Tim Ryan with Mike Mayock. We are here at Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, and Mike returning to his football and academic roots here at Boston College. And Mike, uh, some exciting quarterback action expected this afternoon, particularly from the sophomore from Georgia Tech, Joe Hamilton. Yeah, Joe Hamilton is a great athlete. He runs the option extremely well. He throws the football well, both out on the edge and in the pocket. But he's got to make better decisions, and it's something he's doing a little bit better each week under new offensive coordinator, Ralph Regan. Now, his favorite target? Well, it's his cousin. Harvey Middleton. Middleton's an all-ACC performer. He's got great speed, big playability, and Tim, I really believe that man was the difference in their big win against Clemson last week. 23-20, to 20, a big win indeed in the ACC. Now, the quarterback is the story here at Boston College as well, because Dave Hasselbeck injured last week in the loss against Cincinnati. They hoped right up until yesterday, Matt Hasselbeck, I should say, uh, was expected to play, but unfortunately, not ready to go. Yeah, he hurt his hip late in the game against Cincinnati, and it was something that every Everybody thought was going to keep him out this week. Now take a look. It's a nasty hit. He's diving for a first down right here. Takes a shot on the hip, but the real problem is not the hip. He's cleared the play there. The problem is a buckle fracture on his right thumb. I saw him on practice on Thursday. He had trouble holding on to the football, so in steps junior Scott Mutrin. He gets his fourth career start. He's got an excellent arm. The key for him today, he's got to make correct reads and, more importantly, throw the football on time to take some pressure off that B.C. rushing attack. Well, in the face of the gambling scandal a year ago, the new coach here, Tom O'Brien, has made a lot of changes in the Boston program. The players themselves have also tried to do the same. And for more on that story, let's go down to our sideline reporter, David Logan. All right, Tim, thank you very much. This T-shirt represents a brand-new attitude for the Boston College players. Now, because of last year's gambling scandal, they felt as though they would have to help turn this program 180 degrees back into the right direction in order for this program to see good times again. So what all the players are doing this afternoon is they're wearing this T-shirt underneath their uniform as just a small reminder of what their goals are for 1997. Tim? All right, David. These teams have met three times previously as we look at Coach O'Brien. And Georgia Tech has won all three, and the last meeting was in 1991. 30-14 victory for the Yellow Jackets. Brakes will kick off for Georgia Tech. They won the toss. 
elected to kick it off. Main Walker is the deep man for the Eagles of Boston College. Derek Crittenden joining him, number nine. And we're underway. Fakes kick off deep into the end zone. Jermaine Walker will not bring it up. So the Eagles will start. First and 10 at their own 20-yard line in their maroon and gold uniforms here as a late arriving crowd as uh, as usual here at <laughs> Alumni Stadium making their way in from the tailgate parties out in the parking lots. The Boston College tradition, Tim. Scott Mutrin, the junior from Middlebury Heights, Ohio. The quarterback today because of the injury to Matt Hasselbeck. Hurt last week in the loss against Cincinnati's Bearcats. Mutrin, a junior at 6'3", 215 pounds. First down, Quinton Lee gets the first carry of the day. Picks up close to three yards on the play. Sophomore from Houston, Texas. Let's look at the Boston College Eagles offensive lineup. Hemmert, the fullback, joining Quinton Lee. The tight end is Todd Pollock. Wide receivers, Dennis Harding and Mike Guazzo. Guazzo for the injured Anthony DeCosmo. Across the front, Miles Brzezinski, Damian Woody, an outstanding-looking center. The sophomore and Mitchum and LaRose. Down and six. Lee again, and he finds running room. Lee could go the distance here. Only Jason Bosta can catch him. Back comes the linebacker Brooking, but he is going to score. Quentin Lee, touchdown. Pretty obvious that the Boston College coaches, what they told us yesterday was they really felt strongly that they could run the football between the tackles. First two plays of the game, off left tackle and then off right tackle for 76 yards and a touchdown. George O'Leary can't believe it, and Tom O'Brien is ecstatic. Quentin Lee, the sophomore, averaging 5-7 a carry as the third tailback here. This is John Maddox for the point after. And the Eagles of Boston College have grabbed a 7 to nothing lead on a 76-yard touchdown run. Love isolation play with the fullback. Hemmert leading right up into the hole. 91 with the block on their All-American linebacker, Brooking. Look at the seam in between. And when you miss the tackle by the free safety, Brian Wilkins, Quinton Lee is quick enough to take it to distance. And there was nobody going to catch Quinton Lee. Boston College up 7 to nothing. Quentin Lee, a rush for 164 yards against Cincinnati in a reserve all last week on the second play from scrimmage, 76 yards for the score, and a 7-0 Boston College lead. BC, go ahead. BC coaches were talking about lack of big play capabilities, and what happened to second play, they bumped 176 yards. Tech opted to kick off. They won the toss, opted to kick off. They paid a heavy price. Yeah, when, when you defer, you never know what's going to happen. Hannafin. Kicks it off for the Eagles. It comes down at the 15. Taken there by Philip Rogers. And Rogers hit immediately. Stretched out to the 22-yard line. Every tailback's favorite play is isolation. And there's two key blocks when you run isolation. The first is the fullback right here on All-American Brooking. The second is the left guard, Brzezinski. He seals. You ought to see the seam right there. And let's take a look at it. Hemmert with the block on Brooking 35. There's the seal on the other great linebacker, Rogers. The missed tackle by Wilkins. And at this point, they're not going to catch him. Georgia Tech's first offensive possession. Joe Hamilton, the quarterback. They're without their tailback, Charlie Rogers, out with an ankle injury. They give it to Charles Wiley, the junior from Miami, Florida, on first down. Pounds it out for three, maybe four. Wiley will play both tailback and fullback today. There's Joe Hamilton, just 5'10", 189 pounder, was headed to Nebraska, but his mom wanted him closer to home. He's from nearby South Carolina. He chose Georgia Tech, and the Yellow Jackets are gratefully dead. His cousin Harvey Middleton wanted him here, too. He was a major recruiting help for Coach George O'Leary. Second down, seven. Wiley again, Charles Wiley. Wiley, who missed most of last year with an injury. And when he went down, it was a tough year for Georgia Tech. They're glad to have him back full health. 
And a look at the rest of the lineup. Wiley is joined by Ed Wilder, a freshman at fullback. Mike Lilly starts at tight end, but they'll use all three of their tight ends. Middleton, the outstanding wide receiver, joined by Derek Stiegel. Across the front, Ken Salage, Jason Burks, Craig Page, Brent Key, and Chris Brown. They are a young front. Stiegel, Middleton, and Sheridan. Three wide receivers now on third down. Intended for Cuba. Tight end number 34, the pass off the mark, and the Yellow Jackets will have to punt. Mike Willett's Chris Hovan, watch for him, number 95 in the middle, and Andrew Krause, the front in the 3-4 for Boston College. Eric Stores, he's having an outstanding year. Brooke Heald, Markel Blunt, and Greg Bartlett, and the secondary, Shalom Tollfree, George White, Pedro Serino, a banger from the free safety spot, and Pat Phelps gets the start on the corner. Walker fielding the punt. Got to about the 19-yard line. And Wilder's there to make the tackle for Georgia Tech. A 61-yard punt. Isolation's been a big play in the Boston College offense. They told us they wanted to run the football between the tackles. What happened last week against Cincinnati, they get the good lead block again, and then the center, Woody, and the right guard, Mitchum, wall off. Watch the seam that's created between the right guard and the center for Quinton Lee. Hops through, cuts back, goes 39 yards, and folks, that's fairly reminiscent of what we've already seen today, and I guarantee you that's the way Tom O'Brien wants to see the rest of the day go. We will see that play all day today. Right, Mike Mayock and a 61-yard punt from Rodney Williams of Georgia Tech starts Boston College at their own 19-yard line. Mutes in the quarterback for the injured Matt Hasselbeck. Three wide receivers here on first down. Mutes' first pass is dropped. He was on the mark with it. It is dropped by Todd Pollock, the senior tight end. Defensively for the Yellow Jackets, Ralph Hughes, Derek Shepard, Tony Robinson, and Jesse Tarplin. Tarplin off to a great start at defensive end this year for Georgia Tech. The linebackers are Cameron, Rogers, and Brooking. Rogers and Brooking have started 24 of the last 25 Yellow Jackets games at the linebacker positions together. Caldwell and Bostic on the corners. Tillman and Wilkins are the safety. Tech comes up quickly to stuff that. Quinton Lee met by Jerry Caldwell coming in off the corner, along with Shepard, the left defensive tackle, number 92. And Caldwell uh, hurt on the play as he came crashing up from the corner. Yeah, that was a corner blitz. Their boundary corner coming off the near side, making the initial hit and really took a shot. Jerry Caldwell at a block punt against Wake Forest in that victory by Georgia Tech, the junior from Chester, South Carolina, slow to get up here. There's a good football coach right there. Kind of a kind of a link to their past. George O'Leary, as we look at Caldwell getting medical attention. Watch what happens here. Here's your left corner. The safety's going to come over here and cover man-to-man, -man, and he's going to come right off the edge. Great call by the defensive coordinator, Huxtable. Catches BC in a run play. Guard doesn't see him on the pull. And it looks like he almost gets hit by his own guy coming underneath on the submarine attack. There it is. There's the hit up top. And he also gets hit down below by his own guy, Derek Shepard. So he kind of got high load there. Sure did. It was quite a collision with Quinton Lee. You mentioned Lee uh, ran for 25 carries Ooh. against Cincinnati last week. 164 yards. Caldwell up and all right. We're happy to see. Oh, D, get the ball. So Lee coming into the game with 137, added 76 on the touchdown run. Kofi Smith comes in for Caldwell, number 43, on the boundary corner. New trend. Broken up by Smith. <laughs> he intended for Guazzo. Went right after him. Somewhat reminiscent of an NFL team. You go right after the guy that comes into the game, but Smith did a heck of a job on that. Muchin delivers the football high and outside, but Kofi Smith gave no cushion whatsoever and broke up the pass intended for Quazzo. Mike Quazzo, number 80, a sophomore from Oakland, New Jersey, starting for the injured Anthony DeCosmo. He's out with a hamstring problem. Jason Malecki stands at the five, hits it from the nine-yard line for Boston College. Harvey Middleton. 
makes it at the 35 of Georgia Tech. And he is dropped at the 47-yard line of the Yellow Jackets by Pedro Serino. Good field position there for Georgia Tech. 47-yard punt and a 12-yard return. We'll follow your favorite team all season long on CBS Sports Line. We've got scores, highlights, breaking news, and all kinds of in-depth info. And CBS Sports Line is your online source for stats in all 112 Division 1A teams. Click on and be part of the action at cbs.sportsline.com. First down, Yellow Jackets at their own 47-yard line. Play action. Hamilton rolls right, and he's too high with that pass intended for Middleton. Toll free. Had the coverage for B.C. That's a good matchup right there. Their best wide receiver, Harvey Middleton, against B.C.'s best coverage guy, Shalom Tolfrey. Word on Jerry Caldwell. Just had the wind knocked out of him. Is expected to return defensively for the Yellow Jackets. Second and ten. Tech's going from a one-back fork on first down to an eye formation on second down. Hamilton, screen pass. Wiley gets into the 45-yard line of Boston College. Seven-yard gain on the play. It'll leave second and three in B.C. territory. Good timing right there by Craig Page at the center and Jason Burke, the left guard, getting out in front of Wiley. Pick up six or seven yards and puts him into a makeable third and short situation. Coach Tom O'Brien in his first year, replacing the departed Dan Henning, head coach at Boston College. Short drop from Hamilton, good catch. That is Sheridan, Mike Sheridan, the junior from Massapequa, New York. Should have the first down, he does, at the 40-yard line of Boston College. D.C. doesn't run a nickel defense. They use their inside linebacker, Markel Blunt, who's going to cover man-to-man -man on the wide receiver slant right in here. You can't give the inside away, and Sheridan takes it right there. Ball's delivered on time. That's a good play right there. Good pitch, good catch, and it's a first down. At the Boston College 40-yard line, out of the eye formation, Give us to Wiley. Wiley shakes off one tackler. Good effort gets him down to the 35. Greg Bartlett tripped him up. The linebacker number 36. Junior from Hartford, Connecticut. Good penetration by their nose guard. Hovan cleared it up for Bartlett. George O'Leary called Charles Wiley their best running back, and he was sorely missed last year. He has 151 yards over three games coming into this one. And of course, without the speed of Charlie Rogers, they're relying on Charles Wiley today, number 36. Wiley again, working his way down the sidelines. Forced out at the 31 of the Eagles. Markel Blunt pushed him out. Flag on the play. And it's apparently against Georgia Tech. A little hold. Boston College front four doing a good job stemming and faking. Referee Jack Childress will give us the call. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat, second down. The officials uh, today are from the ACC. Jack Childress is actually working for Jim Knight, who was scheduled to work this game. And, of course, he is the gentleman who suffered a heart attack last week in the North Carolina-Virginia game. And this officiating crew has dedicated their work today to uh, Jim Knight. And we're happy to report that as of this morning, he is now in good condition in hospital in North Carolina. Another flag down, a screen pass for Wiley, and he dropped it, ran into his own blocker. And pressure came from Eric Stores, who has eight sacks on the season. He had the heat on Hamilton. Seems like this Georgia Tech offense can't get in sync yet. Offsides. Oh, on Boston College. Break there for the Yellow Jackets. Tom O'Brien, one of the things that everybody that I talked to at Boston College this week said about Tom O'Brien. defense, five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. <laughs> now, every defensive coordinator I've ever seen has that look in his eyes. These guys are crazy. It's just kind of inbred. 
look right around here. That looks like Hoban. His head and arms are almost in the neutral zone just by alignment. And leaves second and eight. Jim Rose, the defensive coordinator. Pass is complete to Derek Stiegel. Stiegel, the senior. Coming off a knee injury suffered last year that had him missing most of that season. And here's a look at the ACC standings. You see Tech uh, 2-0 and and with a schedule coming up in conference. Uh, they're hoping they can keep their momentum going here and be a factor in the ACC this year. They had a big win against Clemson last week, and it's critical that they don't take two steps backwards with a loss to Boston College. They've got a beatable team next week with NC State before a brutal schedule in Florida State and Virginia. Wiley. Wiley gets down to the 27-yard line on a first down play. Krause and Serino combine on the tackle for the Eagles. Well, that was certainly a subject of much conversation, uh, worrying about falling back here against BC after the big one against Clemson, both by Coach George O'Leary and by the players, the seniors particularly. Yeah, you get the feeling that they're very cognizant of the fact that if they lose this game, the momentum they've gained thus far in the season will be lost. It's happened to them before after victories over top teams. Looks like Boston College jumped early there. Hovan again quick to get in and Hamilton just diving straight ahead. They had a corner blitz that time. Their corner Pat Feltz coming from the boundary side. Chris Hovan goes to the sidelines and this 282 pounder put on about 30 pounds in the off season. And they think he's going to be just a real force, just a sophomore. Defense, five yard penalty, repeat second down. Yeah, Tim, I had a chance to speak with him the other day and I, I said, you know, I'm really impressed with you on film. Do you mind if I say you're pretty quick for a fat kid? <laughs> and he just started to laugh. He said, no, no, I take that as a compliment. Thank you. He can play. They're really excited about his potential here. Second down and about two. Inside handoff for a first down. Wiley takes it inside the 15 down to the 13-yard line of Boston College. Pat Feltz stopped him there. Little power football right back at you by Georgia Tech. Wiley is 6'1", 226 pounds, and they really believe, watch the left side of this line. Down block, tight end, shields off Bartlett on the back side. Good job by Wiley just going north and south. That's a good, solid play in what Tech wants to do. Adam Grace is in for Hovan. And Wiley finding running room again. Blasts his way down to the seven-yard line. So the Yellow Jackets starting to work the middle of the B.C. defense effectively. Serino and Krause combine to make the stop. They did a nice job against Clemson settling into a rhythm using Wiley both at fullback and also at tailback in the one-back offense. This B.C. defensive line has got to step it up because if they're effective running the ball like this, Joey Hamilton's going to be tough on the pass. Hovan has come back into the game. Grace is out. Wiley tripped up on a good play. Out the corner, Pat Feltz came in to nail him behind the line of scrimmage. His momentum carried him for a gain of about a yard. Feltz right there looks like he hurt his right shoulder. He splits time at that boundary corner with Carlton Rowe. Number 70 right there. Brent Key pulls out, and there's the one-on-one -on -one tackle. He kind of ducked, ducked his head and looked like the shoulder landed funny. So he ducks the head and then hits the shoulder. And Wiley came limping off. Philip Rogers is in number 37 at the tailback spot. Philip Rogers, he's got room. He'll score. Touchdown. Philip Rogers walked it on in. Good block on the corner. And the sophomore tailback, number 37, has Georgia Tech on the board. The textbook drives almost all on the ground. Tech did a great job picking up the free safety blitz by Serino. Rogers danced into the end zone. Point after by David Franks. And it is good. We are tied at 7. 7.18 remains in the first quarter here at Alumni Stadium. Good call. The seal block by the fullback, number 47, Ed Wilder. Wilder allows Philip Rogers just to dance into the corner of the end zone. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. 7-7 seven, seven in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. 
Wilder, the fullback, comes in motion, gets a seal block here. The left guard pulls out. He gets the kick out. And then watch the wide receiver come in late and make his block. There's Wilder, the fullback. Left guard with a good pickup block. And there's the wide receiver, 17, right here with a good block on the defensive back. Allows him to dance into the end zone. A little bit of a hold there, but that's not bad. Good job by Sheridan. 52 yards and 11 plays using up 4.30 on the clock for Georgia Tech to tie it at 7. Philip Rogers with the score. Dave Frakes will kick it off for the Yellow Jackets. The rambling wreck of Georgia Tech rebounding right back after the 76-yard touchdown run by Quinton Lee for Boston College early. Good deep kickoff. Jermaine Walker will not bring it out. And let's go down to David Logan on the sideline. All right, Tim, thank you very much. One of the concerns for Georgia Tech coming into the football game was how they were going to perform on the AstroTurf. Now, they haven't played on turf since 1994. That's 26 games. But now, what they're going to use this afternoon, you take a look at this one shoe here. This is the this is the Air Pro Turf Stove shoe, the high top. Just the bottom one would be the Astro Grabber. Now, when I talked to Brandy Parrish, the assistant equipment manager, he said both shoe will work very well, whether or not it's on the wet surface or the dry surface. Right now, Tech seems to have no problem on the astral turf Tim <laughs> thanks David not at all the way they lowered down the field in the last drive <laughs> not like the old days though is it Tim I mean that's high-tech stuff down there it sure is it the number of uh, shoes and the uh, the options that they have for all kinds of service is just amazing flag on the first down play dead ball foul false start on the offense five yard penalty still first down well another costly error for tom o'brien's team two offsides hurt them on the georgia tech drive that led to the tying score and now on first down they're backed up to the 15 yard line first and 15. long setback that is frank chamberlain the fullback play action and they throw it out to the tight end, that is Scott Dragos, number 83, making the catch. Senior from Rochester, Massachusetts. 6.55 to play here in the first quarter at Alumni Stadium. We're on the campus of Boston College in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. 7-7 game. Chamberlain and Quinton Lee now, the two-back set for Boston College. Here's Quinton Lee. And Quinton Lee barrels out for a gain of seven for the Eagles. And that same man dashed 76 yards on the second play from scrimmage to give Boston College the early 7-0 lead. And then it was Philip Rogers after a 52-yard drive taking it in for the score from six yards out to tie it up at seven. BC's offensive line is doing a nice job on those two great linebackers for Tech, Brooking and Rogers, so far in the game. Third down and four. Short drop by Newton, the pass too high. Intended for Crittenden. Derek Crittenden, the five foot nine sophomore, would have needed a ladder to bring that one down. <laughs> Dave Huxtable, defensive coordinator, came with a corner blitz again with Caldwell. Good job by Rogers. There's Dave Huxable right there in the forefront of the picture. Been there for six years. Second year as a defensive coordinator. Jason Malecki into punt. Standing at his 12-yard line. Harvey Middleton. Back to receive for Georgia Tech. A short punt off the side of his foot. Bounces high at the 45-yard line and out of bounds. So again, the Yellow Jackets with good field position. They'll start from their own 42-yard line. A 35-yard putt. We're tied at seven. We have 5.44 to go in the first quarter here at Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. You're looking at the offensive coordinator, Ralph Friedgen, from Georgia Tech, uh, back this year joining Tech and likes to work down on the sideline with his very young Yellow Jackets team. Joe Hamilton, the quarterback, very comfortable with his new offensive coordinator. Play action and pressure on Hamilton. He can run. Hamilton all the way down to the 35-yard line and a first down. Forced out by toll-free, 23-yard gain. That's where the athleticism of Joe Hamilton can kill you. 
They get real good penetration here with Hovan, Willits, and Stores. Play action pass. Here comes Stores with a chance to get his ninth sack of the year, but when he whiffs, it's all over now. Joe Hamilton runs about a 4 5 40. They're not going to catch him. Just great athletic ability, making something happen out of nothing. Joe Hamilton was an MVP in every sport he played in high school. The give is to Philip Rogers. He gets inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. Now for an update, let's go to Jim Nance at our studios in New York. All right, Timmy, down at Neyland Stadium. Here comes Peyton Manning in Tennessee. From the 21-yard line, Manning flings it across the middle, and he is picked off at the goal line. Malika Griffin, Manning that secondary for Ole Miss like Mike Mayock used to for Boston College. Let's go back to Tim and Mike. <laughs> Well, of course, you would have taken it the distance for the score, right? Are you kidding me? I'd have been beat deep. It would be 6 nothing. We'd be in the hole. Second down at four here. Hamilton drops. And the catch is made by Lilly. No, incomplete. Ball hit the ground. Nice stretch out by Lilly. Made a good attempt, but it is trapped and is an incomplete. George White, the safety number 40, had the coverage on the tight end. And Mike Lilly's... Generally, they're better receiving tight end. He's a redshirt freshman. He gets his hands under it, but the ball slips through. You can see it hits the ground, and that's an excellent call by the referee. Good call. Tough to see that one. Charles Wiley back into the lineup at the tailback position now. Number 36, Rogers comes out for Georgia Tech. Third down. Hamilton with time. Oh, and it's picked up. Carlton Rose still going over the 40-yard line. Pulled down by Ken Salage, but the first interception of the game at a 26-yard return. Rose splits time at the boundary corner with Pat Belts, and if you're going to throw that deep out, you've got to throw it on time, and Hamilton was a little bit late. You got to throw it a little bit earlier because it gave time for Rowe to break on the football, makes a great catch cutting in front, keeping his balance and making a 26-yard interception return. That's really a great job by Carlton Rowe. Corner blitz again. First down at the BC 41. Quinton Lee. Grinds it out for about three, maybe four. Look at the break on the football. When pro scouts look at defensive backs, corners especially, they always talk about the ability to break on the football, and that's exactly what defensive back Carlton Rhodes showed right there. Good ability to jump on the football and then run with it. Second down. About six to go from the 45-yard line of BC. This is Lee, and Lee will be close to the first down. He's pushed back, apparently just short of the marker. Quinton Lee, the third tailback. And there is uh, Matt Hasselbeck, who is out of action with that thumb injury. Suffered a uh, hip and a thumb injury last week against Cincinnati in a losing cause. Just not ready to go. He was hoping right up to yesterday he might be able to play. And Omari Walker receives a round of applause from the crowd. He has just come onto the field. He's been out of action since the West Virginia game with a knee injury. Number 33, biggest leading rusher a year ago. In the lineup for the first time, and he has the ball. He is right at the line of scrimmage trying to get the first down and he did not get there wow. Keith Brooking and Justin Robins Robertson the linebackers combined to get him wow. Robertson was in for Rogers made a great hit on that play at the line of scrimmage here's the injury against West Virginia he had already had 89 to 90, 89 yards to this point hurts the knee been out the last week and a half you can see the left knee I watched him in practice on Thursday. He looked great. Tom O'Brien's biggest concern was conditioning, not whether or not he'd be able to go. They're going to measure here for this first down possibility for BC. I It'll, thought he got stuffed short, Tim. I did too, but it's going to be very close. Mark can make the difference, of course, and it's just it short. About three inches. Larry Walker. Of course, Mike Cloud came in to replace him, had a great game, then he got hurt last week against Cincinnati. That brought Quentin Lee in, who had a big game, rolling up 164 yards. Here comes the beef. Tom O'Brien sending in the big tight ends on fourth and inches. They're going to go for it. And one thing I saw them practice on, on Thursday is third, fourth down, less than five yards, trying to draw the defense offside with the hard count. Let's see if they try that first. If not, I think you're just going to see a quarterback sneak from Utah. Three inches is all they need. Three tight ends in there for the blocking purposes. 
Oops, and they give it to Lee, and he may be stopped. Brooking put the hit on him. This will be close. I'll tell you, Brooking showed me why he's one of the better linebackers in the country on that fill. Quick and tough. Brookings right here. Watch him flow right into the hole and make the hit the line of scrimmage. Sees the play, hits right at the line of scrimmage, gets a help from Robertson. That's a big-time play, and here comes a measurement that's critical. They bring in the chains again here, and this time I think they're going to get it. We're looking right down at it here just inside the 50. And wow. it is a first down, Boston College. Quite a good defensive play by the Ramblin' Wreck linebackers. Quinton Lee gets the first down. Those last two plays highlighted the ability of the Georgia Tech linebackers. Two plays off tackle. Linebackers stepped in the hole and stuck them up for just about no gain. Eagles send two wide receivers out to the left side. Two back set. Fullback Hemmer. And Quinton Lee, the tailback, eludes one tackler, but his met at the line of scrimmage did not get much there at all. Maybe a yard. Justin Robertson still in for Ron Rogers made the tackle along with Patrick Bradford number 79 the tackle in the Big East Boston College sitting at two and one atop the standings Virginia Tech unbeaten at three and oh yeah but what sticks out is right here Syracuse Miami look at these guys oh and one oh and two that's unbelievable so the Eagles feel they're very much in the hunt in the Big East. Let's bring something together here. Shake off the loss to Temple. Utrin. Now for Quinton Lee, he had nowhere to go. No blocking to help him there. Justin Robertson arrives to make the tackle along with Bradford again. Georgia Tech, I'm sorry, Timmy. Georgia Tech showed an eight or nine people in the box that time. He checked off to throw it. And watch what happens with the linebacker right here, reading it and coming up and making the play on the quick dish. Three-step drop, 58, Robertson makes the cut. That's his man all the way. And that's recognition, defensive football, what you got to do, man-to-man -man coverage. Good job by Justin Robertson in the game for Ron Rogers. Senior tackle Patrick Bradford is the injured player, number 79. He collided with his own teammate, Justin Robertson, who also came off the field looking a little bit shaky as a result of the collision. Ron Rogers, the starter, number 50, has returned to the lineup. And Bradford getting attention down there. That's a tough injury. Bradford's only played, started one game, got hurt. Looks like he's hurt again. George O'Leary wanted to use all eight of his down linemen in this game, and he's having to do it. Right up there, upper right side of the green. Look at the, the shot. It's going to be a helmet, I think, on number 79 right there, Bradford. Right there. His knee gets caught underneath by his own guy. I think Justin Robertson, Robertson who yeah. made the tackle. That's right. Tim, this is a game of attrition already. BC came in, banged up. People are going out by the busload. Florida State beating up on Miami today. Another loss. Wow. The Hurricanes. Witherspoon is in for Bradford, number 94. Mutrin. Out for Jermaine Walker. He's got some running room. And he tripped up from behind by John Myers, the nickelback, number seven, or he would have gone a long way. There's the guy they've got to get the football to. You talk about making big plays. He, Jermaine Walker is the quickest guy on their football team. You're going to see number 89, the tight end, Todd Pollock, make the key block to the left of your screen. Right there, he gets the block on corner, Jason Bostick. That gives Walker the inside of the field. He's a 4-4 guy. He really flies. First down, Eagles. They're at the 37-yard line of Georgia Tech. Quentin Lee trying to go off tackle left, and he is stacked up. Got a couple of yards before he's thrown back. Oh, boy. 47 to zip. We gave you that score again. Uh, Florida State, of course, they're an outstanding football team. Oh, my. But Miami really struggling. Look what Syracuse did today. That might even be more surprising to me than yes. the preceding <laughs> score because East Carolina is a good, solid football team. Wow. Talk about Jekyll and Hyde. That's Syracuse this year. Well, they've still got Donovan McNabb. No matter what happens, you know that they're going to be in every game just on the strength of his ability alone. Yeah, but you don't know who's showing up, Tarzan or Gene. That's true. Second and eight. And a first down strike from Mutrin. 
Connecting to Dennis Harding, number 18. Neutron now four of seven in the passing department. Two interceptions when he came into the game for the injured Matt Hasselbeck against Cincinnati. They were costly and, in fact, turned the game to the Bearcats. And uh, so he has uh, shown his mental toughness, bouncing back here today as a starter for the injured Hasselbeck. Final seconds of the first quarter were tied at seven with the Eagles of Boston College driving inside the 25-yard line of Georgia Tech. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Georgia Tech 7 and Boston College 7 will return to Alumni Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. We are back at Alumni Stadium where the score is 7 to 7 beginning the second period of play. Tim Ryan and Mike Mayock. The temperature 66 degrees. Very high humidity. It's still quite pleasant but cloudy skies prevailing most of the day. A little sun earlier this morning. And a sellout crowd here at Alumni Stadium. Tenth play of the drive for the Eagles of Boston College. And it began with the interception by Carlton Rowe of the pass of Joe, uh, Joe Hamilton back early in this uh, drive. Starting them at uh, 40 one yard line of Boston College and they are now at the Georgia Tech 25. Right ahead is Hemmert, the fullback. On the tight end is driven back. Ron Rogers and Brian Wilkins. It's unusual to see Tillman getting in on it. Unusual to see there's there's that all-American candidate at linebacker. He's I'll tell you what, this is a physical football game to see him step into the gap up here and watch Brzezinski right here come around and get him. Gain of about three, and this is Lee, and he tripped over his own man trying to get wide. Did not have a lot of room to run there anyway as they came up quickly from the corner. Rivera's Tillman, the safety, was there to meet him. And the linebacker, Cameron, Delante Cameron, number 55. But Tim Lee already has 99 yards rushing, 10 carries, 99 yards, and the coaches really felt strongly that they could run the football between the tackles today, and that's exactly what we've seen. It's a key third down in the red zone. Down and seven. From the shotgun, Mutrin. Gets some time now running out of it. And he holds on as he's wrapped up there by a swarm led by Ralph Hughes, number 46. The left defensive end, the senior from Montgomery, Alabama. That's his third sack of the season. It's a great job by Hughes, but what happened was they were trying to get Pollock down the seam, and he was bracketed between the linebacker and a safety. You can see him looking right down the seam, double team right there by number 50 Rogers and Travaris Stillman, and that allowed Ralph Hughes to get to the quarterback. 46 yard field goal attempt for John Maddich. Newton holding. It is no good. Short and wide to the left. And so the score remains at 7-7 seven to seven here early in the second period at Alumni Field in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Well, Boston College lets a red zone opportunity literally slip through their hands. Look at backup holder is Scott Mutra, and it's usually, usually Matt Hasselbeck has trouble with the hold, a little stutter step by Maddich, and on a 46-yard attempt, that's critical. You don't get the leg drive you usually do. Number seven, Hasselbeck is the usual holder, but with that buckle injury to his buckle fracture of his thumb, he can't hold. On first down for Georgia Tech, it's Charles Wiley. Eagles substituting defensively Adam Grace and Brian Hart are in on the defensive front. Grace 92, Hart 86, replacing Hovan and Willits here. We're early in the second quarter at Alumni Stadium. Pickup of about four yards on the play. It'll be second down and six from the 32-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. Joe Hamilton, the quarterback. Motion behind the ball is Mike Sheridan. And they give it to Wiley. Wiley has the first down. Wiley got just past the marker to near the 39-yard line, forced out by Adam Grace, number 92. 
Well, next Sunday, beginning at 12.30 Eastern, CBS Sports rolls into the fast lane with one of NASCAR's hottest events, the Sears Die Hard 500. Defending champion and overall points leader Jeff Gordon will try to hold off a star-laden field. The Sears Die Hard 500 live from Talladega next Sunday right here on CBS Sports. First down, Ramblin' Wreck. Wiley, he's been the main man. Oh, the great fake outside is Hamilton. Hamilton's going to score. Joe Hamilton takes it the distance. 61 yards. And, Tim, what did we say at the top of the show? He's dangerous because he runs options so well among his other things. That's the 22nd time this year they've run options. They run it about seven times a game. And if you forget he's going to do that, this is exactly what can happen. Watch 55, 47 crowd to tackle fullback. And then there's nobody right there. Serena also gets caught inside. You can't lose contain on option football. You've got to know who your responsibilities are. Well, that whole Boston College front, along with the announcer, went to Wiley on the give. <laughs> and Hamilton, with that burst of speed, goes 61 yards for the score. And Georgia Tech is on top. 14-7, 12-14 remaining in the first half. Hi, Jim Nance from our New York studios. Coming up at halftime, Craig James and Lou Holt will join me with all the scores and highlights and the stories from college football, including Penn State's Big Ten opening victory, bulldozing past Illinois. That's all coming up at halftime. Now back to the game. Well, Joe Hamilton showcases not only his running ability, but his faking ability. Watch what happens to the corner row and the free safety, both of whom have outside contain. They get caught up in here trying to make the tackle on the fullback who doesn't even have the football. There goes Serino inside. Look at this cornerback still running. He still doesn't know who has the football. That's just a great job by Joe Hamilton and a poor job by Boston College secondary. You also have to credit the fullback, Charles Wiley, for doing his part of the faking because he made it look like he had the ball and everybody went to him. Joe Hamilton slipped out, and uh, what a burst of speed. He talked about his all-around ability. He showed his flat-out speed there as soon as he saw the opening. 14-7, to 7, Yellow Jackets. Kickoff is going to be short and caught at the 24-yard line. A fair catch on the fly. Scott Gray goes to tight end, electing to call the fair catch. Next Saturday, beginning at 1 o'clock Eastern, the PGA Tour on CBS travels to historic Williamsburg for the Michelob Championship at Kings Mill. Scott Hope defends his title against the lineup that includes his Ryder Cup teammates, Justin Leonard and Lee Jansen, plus Paul Azinger, Larry Mize, Payne Stewart, Fuzzy Zeller, and many more. The action continues next Sunday at 4 Eastern right here on CBS. First down, Boston College, weak in the quarterback, and Omari Walker is stuck behind the line of scrimmage. Kofi Smith came out the corner to nail him. Both teams are really, really going after people in the corner with a corner blitz. That time, Kofi Smith came from the boundary side. BC ran right into the teeth of the blitz, and boy, did he deliver a hit. No gain on the play, lost about six inches or so. Walker continues as the tailback. He's back from his injury, suffered against West Virginia. Sprained knee. They give it to him again. This time, he gets a couple before he is dropped. Linebackers converge on him. Dave Huxtable is playing a guessing game. The defensive coordinator of Georgia Tech once again ran the corner blitz on second down, expecting Boston College to come back into the boundary again. He's anticipating what Boston College did last week against Cincinnati when they went twins to the front side and ran Quinton Lee almost exclusively backside. Roderick Roberts, number 54, led the charge on that tackle, the junior from Ozark, Alabama. Third down. Close to eight. Houston straight drop. Fires it out into the flat. Caught by Omari Walker and stopped well short of the first down. Out there to grab him was Brian Wilkins, the safety number 16. And BC will have to punt. And that's good defense. Third and nine, you, can, you let them have seven or eight. That's not a problem, and here comes the punt team. Good job by Brian Wilkins. Two electrifying runs, accounting for two of the three touchdowns. Quinton Lee opened it for Boston College, 76 yards on the opening series 
for the Eagles. And then Joe Hamilton, the quarterback for Georgia Tech on the option, 61 yards for the score. This is Middleton. Middleton shakes off the tackle and gets out over the 40-yard line. Good return on the punt from Rodney Williams. 40-yard punt. Well, let's check out the results of last week's CBS Sportsline All-Time Greats poll, where you picked the greatest wide receiver of all time, Jerry Rice. Mississippi Valley State was the winner. Tim Brown of Notre Dame was second, followed by Anthony Carter, Johnny Rogers, and Howard Twilley. Well, now, jump onto the cbs.sportsline.com this week. Make your choice for the greatest linebacker of all time. Here are the nominees. Brian Bosworth of Oklahoma, Dick Butkus of Illinois, Lawrence Taylor of North Carolina, Mike Singletary of Baylor, and Jerry Robertson of UCLA. Tune into our game next weekend. Find out who your choice is as number one linebacker category. Goes down at the 40-yard line. Philip Rogers picked his way out neatly for close to 10 yards on the play out the left tackle side. Tech's got it going exactly the way they want right now. They played a very physical game last week against Clemson. Coming right back after being down 7-0. No panic. They're running the football very effectively, and they're getting in behind that big offensive line. And let's face it, their backs can really push the pile. George O'Leary, head coach of Georgia Tech. Coach to the pros at San Diego. Return to become the head coach. Actually came back as defensive coordinator and then head coach of Georgia Tech. Rowe and making the stop on Philip Rogers. The row didn't even start today, and he's having a really solid football game. A couple of good tackles and the big interception on that last drive. Tom O'Brien said they would uh, divide the time. Row with uh, Pat Feltz. Row's been getting a little bit more here so far in this game, and of course he's made the big play. Well, he started against Temple and had a poor game, and that's why Feltz got the next few starts. But he's really—that's what competition does. You get better and better on the practice field. Joe Hamilton wants a timeout here in this situation. Third down and a long two. Joe Hamilton takes a Georgia Tech timeout with 8.54 to go in the half. The Ramblin' Wreck on top. We're back at Alumni Stadium at Boston College where the Eagles trail Georgia Tech 14 to 7. 8.54 to go in the second quarter. Tim Ryan and Mike Mayock looking at the big nose guard. I get, Hovan. I get the feeling Tech's going to take a deep shot pretty soon. we got third and three here at the Tech 47-yard line. Hamilton wants to throw, gets it off to Philip Rogers. Rogers gets away from one man and works his way down for a first down to the 46-yard line of Boston College. Good effort by Philip Rogers, a sophomore from East Point, Georgia. Well, Quinton Lee opened the scoring here on the first offensive series for Boston College. The second play of the game from scrimmage, 76 yards for the score. And then Philip Rogers, after a 52-yard drive, took it in from six yards out to even things at seven. And then it was Joe Hamilton on the option with a brilliant fake, 61 yards, outrunning everybody. To give Georgia Tech a 14-7 lead, and that's how we stand. 8.20 to go, first half. And movement everywhere, maybe against... It's going to be interesting. Early. Yeah, Willits jumped. Willits crossed the neutral zone, and it forced the Tech guard to jump also. Referee Jack Childress will assess the... Dead penalty. ball. Ball start on the offense. Still first down. Now, they were drawn. <laughs> Burks, number 75. Jason Burks, the left guard, I believe. Yeah, he's on the other side of the quarterback. Tough to see right over here. You're going to see him jump right there. Willops, they both exactly right. Burks moved and then Willops went. That backs him up to the 49-yard line from the shotgun. Hamilton on a quarterback draw. Hamilton got back the penalty yardage and another one. Six-yard pickup stopped by Mike Willops, number 98, the sophomore from Alexandria, West Virginia. I'm a big believer in the versatility of the quarterback position in college football, and you've already seen it in this game. 7-7 seven seven ball game, they run option. They haven't run option all day. He makes the big play. Now they come back in another situation. They can run quarterback draw. Earlier in the game, he got away from, on a scramble. He can make a big difference, and he can take an average team and make it into a good team just because of his athletic ability. Second and eight for Georgia Tech. Off the wing comes Wiley. 
Hamilton running out of time. He is smacked from the backside by Markel Black. Good coverage down the field forced Hamilton to pull the ball down twice. On the back side, you're going to see Markel Blunt. Good pursuit. Excellent coverage down the field. Can't get away from what you can't see, Tim. Hamilton did a good job of holding on to the ball. He didn't see where Blunt was. He just felt him there. Tucked that ball down. Didn't pop it up. Leaves third down and 15. I like the 49 again. Blunt's a tall, rangy guy. Can run and cover and also can get after the quarterback. Middleton for Middleton, and Middleton has it. First down to the 29-yard line. Perfect pass from Joe Hamilton, and so often he knows where to find his cousin when he needs him. <laughs> that was a great pass by Joe Hamilton because he was under pressure from Hovind. But watch Middleton make an inside move and take it to two deep coverage, takes it in, and now he's going to break back away from the safety, Serino. So he's got Serino in behind, he had Rowe in front, and there was only one place to put it, and that's exactly where Hamilton put the football. Look at the extension. Great play. Record-breaking catch for Harvey Middleton. We'll come back to that. This is Wiley. Wiley gets down to the 26-yard line. Hovan and Heald made the tackle. Georgia Tech driving while Harvey Middleton needed 15 yards to break John Sias' record at Georgia Tech. All-time yardage record. And he got 21, so he has surpassed it by six. He's a special football player. I love the six 100-yard games, two of which are already this year. They have second and seven. Rambling wreck, driving again. This is Wiley. Wiley, a strong running back. A fullback uh, getting a lot of action at tailback because of the loss of Charlie Rogers to an ankle injury. They hope to have Charlie Rogers back next week. And this is a critical series for both clubs here, and Middleton's right there. Made a great catch. He's been a big-time player for them for a couple of years now. 64 catches last year. Leads both in career receiving yards and reception. But this is a critical series, Tim, for Boston College. They can't afford to let this team separate anymore because BC's not a big play offense. Can't afford separation. Three backs all stacked up, and now up to the wing goes Virgil Johnson, number 39. Wiley has 48 yards on 12 carries, and they give it to him again. Wiley gets into the 18-yard line and has a first down. So Tech driving again inside the red zone of BC. They go with 5-14 still to play in the first half. Carlton, Rowe, and George White on the tackle. And sometimes football is just a brutally simple game. Third and short, you get your big guys in the game. You run in behind Chris Brown and Brent Key. That was a great job by the redshirt freshman, Chris Brown, creating a hole. Wow. Tenth play of this drive, and you can see what the results have been. 113 yards to five. Here's the option, and it's out to Philip Rogers, and he's pushed out by Rowe, but he got down to the 12-yard line. DC's got their hands full defensively right now. Tech's got the running game going. That opens up the option game, which ultimately opens up the pass game. Here comes option for the second time today. DC collapses. Good block on heel. The dish to the halfback. And just a good job by Rowe making the tackle, but they're getting no inside-out support on option, and that's what you need. Mike Lilly, the tight end, has come in. Offensively for Georgia Tech. Another tight end, and Wiley. Wiley runs the short side, gets into the eight-yard line. Pulled down there by Adam Newman, reserve linebacker number 88, the sophomore. And Newman was a tight end last year. He was one. Of, uh, they had about seven tight ends when when Tom O'Brien took took over last spring. And Newman's one of the ones they moved to the defensive side of the ball. We'll need to measure this one. Tech hoping for first and goal here from about the eight yard line. And they have it. The Yellow Jackets. Scoring distance here, first and goal at the eight-yard line with 4.34 remaining in the first half. They already lead 14 to 7. Tom O'Brien's troops need to come up with a big play defensively here, and I guarantee you Tim Rose, the defensive coordinator, is not afraid to be aggressive. You're going to see a lot of pressure down in here tight. There's Tim Rose calling a timeout. Didn't like the personnel in the game. 
So Boston College with a timeout. 4.22 to play. First half, Georgia Tech by seven. The lessons young people learn from a coach are important throughout their lives. Things like character, self-discipline, motivation, and teamwork. A coach is a mentor. But you don't have to be in sports to be a mentor. With a little time to big heart, you can make a difference in a young person's life. To find out how you can become a mentor, call America's Promise at one 55 youth Every kid deserves a sporting chance. There's Ralph Friedgen, the offensive coordinator, sending the word back in with Joe Hamilton. What do you think he's got in mind? Well, he's an aggressive play caller. Last week in their game against Clemson, score tied. They get a good punt return by Middleton. First play, he goes deep to Middleton to the four-yard line. I thought he was just going to set up a field goal. He tried to throw it in the end zone. So here I see option, or they're going to just keep running the football. I think. He saw something he didn't like just as they came to the line of scrimmage. Let's see what Hamilton does. Hamilton fakes. He wants to throw. It's tipped. And a nice try to pull it down, but it is incomplete. Storrs had the hit on him and forced that ball to pop up. It was intended for Chris Myers, the tight end. Frazian is not afraid to throw the football in any situation. But one thing, be careful when you're on the sidelines, folks. Watch the extension by Myers. He's going to take somebody out right about here. <laughs> Just a little leg whip. He's a big man, too. 6'7", 260 pounds of that tight end. So you saw Hamilton actually just tried to lob the ball up there, but the ball, as he took the hit, it just uh, kind of floated up and was lucky that it wasn't picked off. Yeah, and half the distance to the goal there. And it was offside against Boston College, and so it turns out That's a killer. for the better for Georgia Tech. Here they are now with first and goal inside the five. and keeps it, now trying to throw it in, it's knocked down and almost picked up, incomplete, it was Serino got a hand on it, Wow. the ball did hit the ground as Tolfrey tried to make the interception, reminiscent once again of last week, good fake inside, they tried to throw it in the end, I don't know why he doesn't just run the football right there, if I'm Hamilton, we talked about making decisions at the top of the show with Joe Hamilton. If I'm him, I've got big number 71, Noah King, in front of me. I'm going to run the football in. Why take a chance down here? It looked like it was kind of a little shovel pass he was trying to throw as well. So let's see what he can do here on second and goal from the five. We're going to run now. Here's Johnson in motion. They go to Wiley. Wiley's in the touch stand of the end zone for a touchdown. He was absolutely wide open in terms of blocking lane. Just blew in there without any problem at all. The tech has gotten real physical on BC and they're wearing them down. That drive was just a punishing offensive drive by Georgia Tech. Charles Wiley, the junior. Watch the block, 47. Ed Wilder, only a freshman, leads them right up through the hole. They can't even find people to block. There have been so many people blown out of that hole. And the point after. Dave breaks, and it is 21 to 7. Georgia Tech with 4.06. Still to play in the first half. Charles Wiley, a four yard touchdown run, a 60 yard drive in 13 plays, 5.59 used up off the clock, leaving 4.06. Remaining in the first half in the 21 to 7 tech lead. Situation right now where somebody from Boston College has got to step up and make a play. Down 14, four minutes and six seconds left in the half. You can't afford any more separation. You need a good drive and points on the board. Because I don't think them, their defense, can sit there and take another drive. Like I think their defense, look at that, 13 plays, 60 yards. Tech has just start taken over the football game since that first big touchdown play by Boston College. Dave Frakes will kick it off for the Yellow Jackets. Sun starting to peek through a largely cloudy sky here at Justin Hill, Massachusetts. Home crowd pretty quiet here. We need some action from the Eagles before this half comes to a close. Derek Crittenden, reserve wide receiver, sports through to the 28-yard line. 
Well, join us next Saturday at 3 Eastern as NASDAQ College Football returns to CBS when quarterback Ron Paulus and Notre Dame look to turn around their season when they battle the dazzling quarterback Pete Gonzalez and the Pittsburgh Panthers, who earlier this season upset Miami. Some of you will see number 18, Georgia, take on number 9, Tennessee. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area, Notre Dame-Pittsburgh or Georgia-Tennessee, next Saturday at 3 Eastern. First down, Boston College, their own 29. Scott Butrin, the reserve quarterback, and he hits it to uh, Todd Pollock. Tight end, 240-pounder, senior from Ryan, New York. Good read by Mutrin, the corner blitz once again, assured man-to-man -man coverage, and he had his tight end working with Justin Robertson, an inside linebacker. That should be a mismatch every time. Mutrin now 6 of 9 passing. Boston College had that first two-play drive that resulted in the go-ahead score since then. Nothing doing. Nothing doing there as Quinton Lee turned back by four tacklers from Georgia Tech. Led by Keith Brooking, the very aggressive linebacker, the senior from Sonoya, Georgia. And Justin Robertson has been getting a fair amount of time today in Ron Rogers' spot. The whole theory on this defense is to keep these two guys unblocked. And that's what happens. Neither of them gets touched until Robertson makes the hit initially, and he's followed by Brooking. And that's a good job by the front four, keeping linemen off their linebackers. Ron Rogers on the field now. Chris Edwards, another linebacker, just came in for Cameron. Third down and two. Butrin has the first down. Quinton Lee out of the backfield. Good strike from Butrin there. Talking to Scott Butrin uh, and with Matt Hasselbeck. Uh, Hasselbeck at that point not absolutely sure he couldn't go. Wearing a little cast on his thumb hoping he could be able to play today. And Butrin then announced as a starter while we were literally uh, there talking to the players. Uh, two delightful young guys. There's Hasselbeck, uh, two uh, uh, very intelligent athletes who are doing well in school here at Boston College and made a very good impression on, on all of us. And future and eager to get a chance here to do something. Placing the starter, Matt Hasselbeck. Has his work cut out for him now, but he connects to Rob Tardio, the tight end number 16. Great job by the fullback, Frank Chamberlain, picking up Blitz. That was why Mutrin had enough time. Watch right here on the pickup on the Blitz. That's why Mutrin ends up with enough time to make this throw. It'll leave second and a long two. There's the hit. And bang. Good job by Chamberlain. Mutrin rolling right. He's got a man open. It's downfield. And is it caught? No. Fielded by Dennis Harding is the ruling. Pass a little too low. The one thing I've noticed about Mutrin on tape that annoys me a little bit is he sometimes throws the ball too late. He got out on the dash that time, had two guys open early if he just delivers the ball. And that's the problem with kids that don't play a lot, is you want to make sure you make the right decision so you hold on to it. That time, if he throws it early, it's wide open. Leaves third down and two. <laughs> Mutrin has hit six of his last seven. Sean Simmons comes in at defensive end, number 68, and Roderick Roberts, 54, for Georgia Tech. So, George O'Leary's defensive unit uh, doing what they had planned to do, use a lot of folks. We see Tom O'Brien, new head coach of Boston College, coming up from Virginia. It's a pretty interesting matchup because he's been with George Welsh for 21 years, the last 15 of them at University of Virginia. So obviously very familiar with an, another ACC team with Georgia Tech. Got a timeout on the field right at midfield. Coming up on the College Football Today Halftime Report, Jim Nance, Craig James, and Lou Holtz. We'll get you caught up on all the scores and highlights. That's coming up on the College Football Today Halftime Report. O'Brien huddling on the sidelines, and Butrin has the next play for Boston College with 1.39 to play in the first half. 
BC only has one timeout left. Ball's on the 50-yard line. Tim, here's what has to happen. It's a third down, so they've got to get that first. You've got to concentrate on the first down, and then you've got to realize you only have a minute 39 and one timeout to get down the field after that. One step back. Two receivers out to the left side. Dutrin has a man wide open. That's the tight end, Pollock. And Pollock gets down to the 37-yard line, tripped up there. And unhappy, should have... Uh, hoping, uh, he was hoping that he uh, could have made it down to about the 25-yard line, but Myers able to just trip him up. And they bumped the man off there in crossing routes. Wide receiver Crittenden went one way. BC in the hurry-up offense now, and the shotgun Mutrin. Hangs it out for Chamberlain, the fullback, and he gets down inside the 25 and out of bounds at the 23-yard line. He's not out of bounds, nope. and that was a huge mistake by the fullback, Chamberlain. He's got to be aware of what's going on here. He's got a perfect opportunity to get out of bounds, and he doesn't elect to take it. Watch what happens. Good job running the guy over, but get out of bounds. That's, that's a horrible decision by Chamberlain. You've got to be cognizant of the time left and how many timeouts you have. See, now you burn a timeout. That's a killer. They're at the 23-yard line, and they've taken their final timeout with 115. And apparently it was Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech took the timeout. Tech must have had the wrong personnel on the field to elect to take a timeout in that situation. So the Eagles still have one remaining. They're at the 23-yard line, first down. Matt Hasselbeck with his rally hat turned around. Right in the middle of all that's Jeff Jagodzinski. Headsets on right there. He's the offensive coordinator they just got from East Carolina. Right here talking to his troops. Five years under Steve Logan. It's kind of an interesting offensive concept. When they run the ball, it's like George Welsh's Virginia teams and also the one back at East Carolina. But they really like the West Coast offense that they ran at East Carolina with the five-step drop. And in the back of that pack, you see seven and two. Those are the Hasselbeck brothers. They're both quarterbacks. Hasselbeck is definitely the uh, backup quarterback today. Which one? We're not entirely sure. There's the freshman. I like him. He's been on all the special teams so far this year, but they yanked him off today just in case he had to play quarterback. Tim Hasselbeck. Richard freshman. First down. Neutron. And that one well covered. Uh, not an advised throw in that circumstance. Trying to get it to Guazzo. Keith Brooking nearly picked it up. He had a better shot at it than Guazzo did. That kind of highlights the athletic ability. Look at Brooking at 240 pounds, the diving effort. Told me yesterday that he ran a 4.5540 on pro day. So at, at his 6'3", 240 or 245, <laughs> pretty flexible too, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's got big time NFL ability written all over him. Second and 10, the ball is at the 23 yard line. Pressure on Mutra. Derek Shepard in pursuit is Chamberlain. Shepard lumbering down to the five-yard line, and he's caught from behind by Chamberlain. At the two-yard line, 67 yards for the 290-pound defensive tackle Derek Shepard, the senior from Dayton, Ohio. And the fullback, Frank Chamberlain, had to chase him down. Tarplin puts the pressure on, but you can never throw it back across the field if you don't know what the situation is. And Shepard steps up in front, and only the hustle by fullback Frank Chamberlain from behind, somewhat reminiscent of the Buffalo Bills several years ago in the Super Bowl, and the hustle by their wide receiver, Don Beebe. Even Chamberlain was even trying to strip the ball down there. Great effort on his part, but what a job by Shepard. He'll be breathing heavily for a while. Charles Wiley gets down to the three-yard line. <laughs> Big fellow's not used to running that far, though. Yeah, he's looking for halftime. He's got 45 seconds before he can go and get a little rest. Now, he's a guy that was had all ACC potential. They've talked a lot about him coming into the season. Really hasn't played as well as his ability might indicate. That's a big play, and he's a guy they need to step up if they're going to challenge people in the ACC. Scott Mutrin just avoided an interception by Brooking on the play before that one, and then throws the interception on what was intended to be a screen. And Wiley takes it in for the score. 
And Georgia Tech has opened it up with 20 seconds left in the half. The interception by Derek Shepard setting up the score by Wiley. Tech is just too strong up front. Left side of the line, Salage and Burks with a lead block by Wilder. Wiley does the rest. Power football. Charles Wiley, the junior from Miami, Florida, picks up his second touchdown of this first half. Breaks for the point after. Brandon Shaw, the backup quarterback, is the holder. Just power football, left side of the line, blowing out the right side of Boston College defense, and then the lead back block by 47 Wilder. Good job just getting pad on pad, push the pile. We've got a 28-7 ball game just before halftime. There's Charles Wiley. He's got two touchdowns here, one from four yards, one from three. And this one coming after the interception by defensive tackle Derek Shepard, taking it all the way down to the three-yard line. Well, coming up on the College Football Today Halftime Report, Jim Nance, Craig James, and Lou Holtz. We'll get you all caught up on the scores and highlights from around college football today. That's coming up in the College Football Today Halftime Report. Breaks will kick it off for Georgia Tech. It's a line drive. It's packed by Carlton Rowe, and Rowe gets it up to the 35-yard line before he's pushed back. 15 seconds remaining in the first half. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, that's a tough situation. He knew coming into the season that, that they were depleted a little bit at talent level-wise from the Tom Coughlin years, but it's gotten even worse because of the injuries. I think the key here is BC's got to stick with a consistent guy like him, give him two or three years, get his program together, and I think they'll be fine. First down on the 36-yard line to give us to Quinton Lee. Lee runs hard and well. It's about nine out to the 45-yard line, final seconds of the half. Ron Rogers on the tackle. That'll be the final play of the first half. With the score, the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech 28, the Eagles of Boston College 7. Jim Nance, Craig James, and Lou Holtz will be along with a college football halftime report. And let's go down to Dave Logan at the sideline. Okay, thank you, Tim. Coach, you couldn't have, you couldn't have played a better first half than that. Your best so far this year. Well, except for that one run, the second play of the game, I thought we've been competitive. And again, we're making some mistakes ourselves, but I thought we're making plays when we have to make them, and that's the name of the game. Great job inside the red zone. Your offensive line just chewing them up. Well, I tell you, we got to continue to do that, and uh, defensively, we got to start making some plays. That's the key of the game. You know, you know, Coach. A couple weeks ago, you got upset during halftime. You threw a bottle up against the wall. What are you going to do this? What are you going to do at halftime in here? I may throw a ball again. All right. <laughs> All right, Coach. Tim, let's go back to you. <laughs> I don't think he's got too much to complain about in this first half. <laughs> That's the end of the first half of the score. Georgia Tech 28-7. to College football halftime report comes up after this word from your local station. Tim Ryan back here at Boston College Alumni Stadium where Georgia Tech's Yellow Jackets have a 28-7 to halftime lead. We'll be back with the second half in a moment. Back at Alumni Stadium, it is 28-7 Georgia Tech as we await the start of the second half. Let's go to David Logan down on the sidelines. All right, Coach, outside of the first couple of plays, uh, your offense has sputtered a little bit in the first half. Yeah, they've done a good job with us on defense, and we just haven't been able to make any plays against them. It's a good defensive football team. We're going to have to do, obviously, uh, be able to run the ball better and throw the ball more effectively. Any chance, Coach, we may see a coach, uh, quarterback change? Maybe Tim Hassel back, maybe? No, not right now, not at this time. All right, Coach, have a good second half. Okay, thank you. All right, David, thank you. Uh, coach O'Brien and the uh, Boston College Eagles will have to kick it off on their 35-yard line to start this second half. Terry Hannafin handles the kickoffs. We saw a quick look there at Tim Hasselbeck, the third-string quarterback normally. His brother Matt, of course, number one, out with a thumb injury. Scott Neutring will continue at the controls here, at least for the start of this second half. Des White and Philip Rogers are the deep men. Des White. And it's 
taken by Philip Rogers. And Rogers gets some running room. Still has it. And knocked out of bounds at the 44-yard line. So Georgia Tech in good field position to start this second half. And they already have a 28-7 lead. Tim Ryan and Mike Mayock here at Alumni Stadium. And not a great start for uh, the Boston College Eagles who have really struggled. And look like they're being physically pushed around by Georgia Tech in the first half. Yeah, there's no question that Tech's offensive line, I thought, took the game over about mid-first quarter. Continued it all the way through the second quarter. And they did a great job keeping BC from any big plays except for that first long run. That came on the second play from scrimmage. Quinton Lee going the distance for the score, but since then it's been all Georgia Tech. Wilder on first down. Picks up about three yards on the carry. The freshman fullback taking a look at the uh, stats here for the first half. You know, both teams ran the ball effectively, but this just jumps off the board at you. 170 yards rushing in one half obviously equates to a 300-plus yard rushing day. Hamilton, the quarterback, picked up 61 of that with a touchdown dash on an option play. Second down and six. That's Wiley, Charles Wiley, he's been very effective. To Georgia Tech, 59 yards in the first half on 16 carries. Boston College has got to do a good job now on first down stopping the run. Trying to get him to a second long situation and start to make some plays. Because, Tim, the difference in the ball game is Tex made all the big plays except for the first big run by Quentin Lake. Third down. Four yards to go for a first. Georgia Tech opening the second half. And Joe Hamilton calls a timeout. He didn't like something he saw. He's running out of time. Takes the time out. So we'll be back at Alumni Stadium at Boston College in a moment. Well, the Yellow Jackets fan, they've got something to blow their horns about. A 28-7 lead entering the third quarter here. They have the ball, third and four midfield. Here they come. Hamilton against the blitz. He's got a man wide open out there. Mike Sheridan, and Sheridan has the first down. Drags a tackler inside the 30-yard line to about the 28. Late flag. And a flag down right at the end of the play. A 22-yard pass play. Hamilton to Sheridan. Tollfree had a hold of him, but he got a ride from Sheridan. <laughs> you know, BC brought the kitchen sink that time. Stores, Markel Blunt, everybody came. Illegal block in the back late in the play. You're gonna one of the one of their linemen came in real late and tried to push the pile, I believe. Wow. George O'Leary says, What are you kidding me? Yeah, that's a tough call there. Yeah. I mean, that was right at the end of the play. There was yep. during the run, blocking the back on the offense, 10 yard penalty, first down. If it came right at the end where it appeared the flag was thrown. Still a first down, however, inside the 40. I think Bartlett, number 36 here, is going to get hit in the back towards the end. Now, look, you know, this is a little bit late to be calling this. Number 70 comes in at Brent Key, the redshirt freshman. To me, that's a ticky-tack call. You just let that go. That stuff happens around piles all the time. Well, Ram on Rex first down again. This is Wiley. Wiley following Wilder. That's a couple pushed out of bounds on the far sideline. And for an update, let's go to Jim Nance in our studios in New York. Jim? Well, Tim, Tennessee has broken this game open in the first two minutes of the second half. First Manning on a touchdown pass to Annie McCullough. Then Dwayne Goodrich makes the pick. And check out the wheels on Goodrich. Running it in for a touchdown. 21-3, to just two minutes into the second half after 7-3 games at the intermission. Back to Tim and Mike. That looks familiar, huh, Tim? It did, yes. Just a <laughs> slightly lighter weight carrying the ball <laughs> off the interception. <laughs> we had from a big tackle, Derek Shepard. And a good catch by the tight end, Myers, from Hamilton, who took the hit, still got the ball off. It was Greg Bartlett, the linebacker, blitzing. And Hamilton did a good job making that completion. Yeah, he stays in there pretty tough. Good, good choice on receivers, and Serena was late getting to the tight end. This is a little crossing pattern. 91 out in the flat. Serino late. Tries to strip the football, but Myers at 6'7", 253, has none of that. That'll leave third and three for Georgia Tech in BC territory. Stiegel, Middleton, and Sheridan. Three wideouts are in. 
And here's the quarterback draw again. Hamilton has the first down and about a yard more. Serino, the safety, came up to make the play on him. So it's a first down, Georgia Tech, to the 27-yard line. Hamilton has now rushed for 89 yards on five carries. Remember, he had the big 61-yarder for the touchdown on the option play with that beautiful fake. George O'Leary's got to be happy with what he's getting here today. He talked about the fact that they didn't want to fall back after the Clemson victory when they're going into four consecutive ACC games against the, the key players in there as they see them for their chances to do well this year. He needed this win up here in the non-conference game, and they're in control. Hamilton, he's got Middleton, touchdown! Kissing Cousins, Hamilton to Middleton. 28 yards for the score, beating toll-free. The toll was free on that one. <laughs> we talked about that matchup early in the first quarter. The best wide receiver on the football field is Harvey Middleton. The best corner BC has from a coverage perspective is Shalom Toll-Free. And with no free safety in deep middle, it's just one-on-one, man-on-man. And that time, Middleton was the winner. But once again, Hamilton dropped it right in where he had to. After. Really impressed with Harvey Middleton. All the tape I've watched of this young man. Football delivered deep middle. No safety in the hole. He's got a three-yard beat on Shalom Tolfrey, and we got a 35-7 game. NASDAQ College Football on CBS is sponsored by the legendary Firebird Trans Am from Pontiac. The NASDAQ stock market. And by head and shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. As we talked about just prior to the break, no free safety in the deep middle. Hamilton does a great job, and the separation by Middleton away from toll-free is the key to the play. The ball's delivered on time, and it's six points. That's like pitch and catch in the backyard, Tim. One-on-one, -on -one, no help. Looked very much like the play uh, last week against Clemson that set up their winning field goal, and Hamilton and Middleton have that uh, special pass-catch relationship, and it's paying off for the rambling wreck. 56 yards in seven plays, a 28-yard score. Breaks to kick it off. It's a line shot. Gathered in at the 10. Jermaine Walker skitters his way out over the 25 to the 26-yard line where Kofi Smith makes the tackle. The 16-yard return. 35 to 7, 11 28 to go here in the third. The ball is spotted at the 27 yard line. Scott Butrin, the quarterback. Remember, if you joined us along the way, he is in there for the injured starter, Matt Hasselbeck. Suffered a thumb injury along with a, a hip injury against Cincinnati last week, but it was the fracture of the thumb that has kept him out of action. You do not expect to see him in this game. Younger brother Tim could well appear. Jermaine Walker making the catch, and Walker trying to split loose. Taken down at the 32-yard line, a gain of about five. You know, I think if we see any hassle back today, given the situation, it will definitely be the redshirt freshman, Tim. Could be Don, the father up in the press box. That might be the one we see. <laughs> well, he might want to throw to him. I'm not sure he want to let him throw it. Syracuse walloping East Carolina today, and there is uh, Tim Hasselbeck, the redshirt freshman quarterback, number three on the roster sheet behind the Mutrin and his brother to start a match. Quinton Lee had 108 yards in the first half. Gets a couple there. Shepard and Rogers, Ron Rogers, made the tackle, and you can see what they've been up against here right from the start of this game with the exception of that second play. It went the distance, Quinton Lee. Yeah, they electrified the, the crowd, play number two for a touchdown, but then it's punt, punt, and remember we had the missed field goal with a bad hold there by the, by the holder, Mutrin, and since then it's just been uh, offensive ineptitude. Interception by Boston College's Colin Rowe set up that field goal opportunity, but the game away empty. Flags everywhere. He may have been drawn. DC jumped, I think. 
Andy Mitchum, the right guard, number 60, looked like he came up a little early drawing Georgia Tech over. Jack Childress, the referee. Dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. He's 74 is Brzezinski, 60 is Mitchum. Far side right here. Once your hand is on the ground, you cannot come up like that. You cannot do that. Once the hand is below the knee, you cannot move it. So that brings it to third and nine now. Newton in the shotgun. Force from the pocket. Starts to run. Puts his head down. Made a good effort there trying to get to the marker. He'll be short, however, by a yard, maybe two, depending on the spot. Ralph Hughes and Delonte Cameron combining to make the tackle for Georgia Tech. And Boston College will punt. Jason Malecki, number 43, the punter comes in. This looks like last week when Hasselback was going for a first down late in the ball game. Look at the hit right here. Ralph Hughes, 46 from the front. That's tough on a quarterback that only weighs about 200 going up against 256. And look at these hurt. Malecki... Middleton takes it at the 22-yard line, shakes out the first tackle, takes another shot, got out to the 26 before he's being pushed back. George White put the hit on him. We've got time for an update. Let's go to Jim Nance in New York. All right, Timmy, remember we saw the interception return by Goodrich for a touchdown? Well, the first play after that, look at old Mrs. John Avery slashing and dashing and breaking it 74 yards for a touchdown. Old Miss missed the extra point. 21-9, Tennessee, 11.05 to go third quarter. Let's go back to Tim and Mike. Best block I saw all day was on the ref there. <laughs> Had some nifty running by Avery. He's exciting to watch, that Avery. Sure is. Philip Rogers out to the 32-yard line for Georgia Tech. Remember, they're playing without Charlie Rogers. They're starting tailback out with an ankle injury. Well, back in the first quarter, that's uh, the last we saw of Boston College offense. Quinton Lee, a 76-yard touchdown dash. Since then, all Georgia Tech. Philip Rogers ending a long drive with a six-yard score. Joe Hamilton on a beautiful fake went 61 yards for the score. And then rolled up to a 35 to 7 lead where we are now. Brandon Shaw in the game at quarterback. Junior from Marietta, Georgia, giving Joe Hamilton relief and going back to our scoring summary. Charles Wiley, the first of his two touchdowns, a four yarder. That made it 21 to 7, and then he went from three yards out. And that was after the uh, long interception return by Shepard, and then it was Middleton on the catch from Joe Hamilton, the 28-yarder here in the third quarter to make it 35 to seven. So Brandon Shaw, 6'3", 220-pound junior, takes over at quarterback for Georgia Tech. Philip Rogers trying off tackle, good pursuit there by the Boston College defensive front. Adam Newman did a good job stripping blockers to get to the action. And Andrew Krause, number 47, in on it. So the Texters will have to punt. <laughs> when you see the hat come on the starting quarterback, it's a pretty good indication he's done for the day. Joe's taking the rest of the day off, and he had another sparkling afternoon. His sophomore quarterback, George O'Leary, thinks he's getting better and better with every game. I think you got to give Ralph Regan credit for that, too. He's really going to... Rodney Williams nearly blocked by Charles Wiley. Jermaine Walker. And Kofi Smith making the tackle. It was Greg Bartlett, number 36, who nearly uh, got the block. 50-yard punt, a dandy. Greg Bartlett ought to get this punt. He elevates, but he goes too high. Bad launch point by Bartlett. We're back at Alumni Stadium, Georgia Tech, 35 to seven in control here in the third quarter. Today's NASDAQ scholar athlete of the game is Greg Bartlett of Boston College, who nearly blocked the punt on the last play. NASDAQ's commitment to the investment in our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Boston College's General Scholarship Foundation. He carries a 3.1 GPA. Greg Bartlett, smart aleck. That's a great tribute to him. He's, he's from Hartford Public School, an inner city kid, coming up here majoring in math, really a tribute. 
first down. Amari Walker gets about three, maybe four yards. Let's go to Jim Nance for an update. Well, Timmy, down in the SEC, a game much closer than anyone would have guessed. LSU against Vanderbilt. At the end of the third quarter, Herb Tyler connects with Larry Foster for the game's first point. They've just opened up the fourth quarter. Tigers lead, but the big news here, Cecil Collins, the SEC's leading running back out of LSU, out for the season with a broken leg. Let's go back to Tim and Mike. That's tough news for LSU, and uh, what an interesting game to the extent that the first point scored that late. Wide open, Mutrin finds the tight end Dragos, number 83. And the senior, Scott Dragos, has a first down for Boston College. Mutrin now 12 of 18, has that one interception that was costly, however, leading to the Georgia Tech touchdown. 19-yard gain there. Uh, that LSU Vandy score is kind of interesting, Tim. There's 16-7 Ohio State in the third quarter. Uh, that Vandy score pretty interesting with Donardo going back to Vanderbilt where he used to coach for the first time. You knew Vandy was going to be pumped up for that game. We've got first down here at the 37-yard line for Boston College. One set back. Two wide receivers split to the right. Mutrin on a straight drop, and he's going to run it up the middle. There's a flag down. Takes a tackle, and Mutrin has the first down, steps out at the 48-yard line of Georgia Tech. Going to get a hold, I think, on BC. Bring well, that, that back. Bring that back, a 15-yard run from Scott Mutrin. Holding penalties are huge because you negate the 15-yard run, then it's 10 from the point of the foul, and I think it's on the right tackle, Noah LaRose. Nola Rose is number 64, the right tackle for Boston College. Jack Childers, the referee with the call. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. There's the right tackle. You're going to see him hold Roderick Roberts, number 54, right side. When, when the arm gets out the framework of the body, that's when they call it. The ref was looking right at him. Wasn't flagrant, but you've got to stay within the framework. Britain did in motion. Newton rolls to the right, gets some protection there. Up the sideline, complete to Jermaine Walker. To the 40-yard line. You know what that is, Tim? That's that old dash series popularized by the Washington Redskins with Joe Theismann back in the early 80s where they got Theismann out on the corner with a guard out in front of him. The good news is you get a good athlete out there. It's a great situation. The only downside to it is you kind of cut the field in half and make it easier for the defense to defend. Mutrin on the mark there, however, and leaves second and seven. Brian Korn, a rookie in it, linebacker for Georgia Tech. Tony Robinson in on the defensive front. Stats are a little bit misleading. That one interception killed him. Flanker screen to Jermaine Walker, and Walker <laughs> cut back along the line of scrimmage and wound up not getting much as he ran into nothing but a sea of white shirts. Justin Robertson is playing well here in the reserve role at linebacker. Makes the stop. Walker's an interesting story. He's from Texas, and he's been injured for the last three years. Hardly got any playing time. Considered transferring to a Texas school this offseason. When Tom O'Brien came in, he really believed in the program of the ex-Marine, decided to stay, and this young man is really quick and one of the few big play threats they have. Third down, a long three. Newton straight drop again, and he's on the money there with that. Yeah. To Gregos. Right on the numbers, and a first down, Boston College. That really showcases his arm. Nobody doubted when he came out of St. Ignatius in Cleveland that he's got a great arm. One, two, three, four, five, plant and throw. That's what you have to do on time. There's the gun in the Dragos, and that's what I said at the top of the show. Mutrin is effective when he throws the ball on time. That's exactly what he did there. 13-yard pickup. Goes down at the 41. Mutrin again. This one complete to Guazzo. And Guazzo, the wide receiver, gets to the 25-yard line. Another eagle first down. Travaris Tillman, the safety, number 26, made the tackle. You know, when O'Brien came in here, he knew he had to change things around here. The program under Dan Henning, the gambling scandal, the losses. What did he do? First thing he did is let's go on the other sidelines. 
Then he said, let's change the uniform. We're going to go 180 degrees, as David Logan told us. Summer housing, plane seating. He did a little bit of everything trying to change the attitude. First down, Boston College, and that is Omari Walker. And what a handicap he's had. Obviously, the uh, suspensions following last year's gambling scandal affecting his team greatly. But then in the injury department, he lost uh, Walker first, and then Mike Cloud, who was doing great, had a big game. And... Uh, he was uh, injured last week against Cincinnati, and so he's been out of action. He's got a backup tackle, Mike Cook, out of play. And then on the defensive side, the linebackers, Jermaine Muck, Bobby Edmonds, and Brian May, all gone for the season. And Greg Fisher, another defensive tackle out here. So he's really, really had a tough time of personnel. Neutron now. Neutron, <laughs> you, you were telling him not to throw there, weren't you, Mike? <laughs> I had a flashback to the first <laughs> half when on the throwback screen. When you've got that kind of situation, you just can't throw it late in the flat. They're trying to make something happen, of course. So Scott Mutrin, Tarplin had him wrapped up. And you know, key people here. Obviously, your quarterback, Hasselback, Cloud's your most explosive running back. The Cosmo, your best wide receiver. Bobby Edmonds is a good linebacker. And Brian May, that really hurt the defense. Four-game suspension for the gambling incident last year. And now he's got bulging... Uh, disc muscle problems in his neck and may never play again for Boston College. On third down, Newton flushed and he's got a lot of running room. One man to beat, he slides to the five. Newton gets to the five-yard line. This thing opened up like a sieve, and I'm not sure I'm sliding there down 35-7 to 7 with a free safety, the only guy to beat. I mean, it's about 200 pounds against 200. Takes it up the middle now. It's him and the free safety of the nickelback, John Myers. You beat him, it's a touchdown. Well, they have a first down at the seven-yard line. Mari Walker goes out. Hemmert, the fullback, in the backfield, and they'll go from the shotgun here on first down. They've been able to spread the field with a pass offense. Three wides out to the right. A little roll again. Butrin has a man, and a one-handed catch by Derek Crittenden. Can't get it into the end zone, but he made a dazzling catch. The sophomore from Annandale, Virginia. If you throw the football on time in this offense, you score points. And that was another one where he threw the ball just a little bit late. Crittenden came open early, and you got to give him the ball with a chance to turn up the field. Trips to the wide side. It's a little pick play. If you throw it now, it's a touchdown. You throw it two steps late, it gives Travaris Tillman a chance to react and make a great hit. Great catch by Crittenden. Oh, beautiful catch. <laughs> now they're all bunched in here. And second and goal. Play action and open in the end zone for the touchdown is Dragos. So the Eagles finally get a productive drive and it results in a major score. Nice job right there by the quarterback. Throwing the ball on time. Play action to the tight end. Scott Dragos. Scott Mutrin really has a good arm. He's got a big-time arm. It's just a matter of more playing experience to get him used to playing in rhythm. John Manage, the point after. And he has it. Great fake here by the quarterback to Hemmer. Slow block and release by Dragos. Wide open. You throw it on time, and it's a touchdown. We've got a 35-14 ball game. Under four minutes left. 3.45 to go in the third. Tim Ryan and Mike Mayock watching Georgia Tech at Boston College. The Eagles just scored to bring it to 35-14. We should remind Eagles fans that they have come back twice for the two victories against uh, West Virginia. From down 17 to 3, as a matter of fact, in that one. That's a classic drive right there. 11 plays, 86 yards. Good job by the quarterback, Neutron. But, Tim, you make a great point. Against West Virginia, they're down 17 to 3 and score 28 unanswered points in the second half. Win the ball game at ultimately 31-24. And then the following week against Rutgers, they were trailing at half. So this is a team that doesn't pack it in, which is probably because they've got a Marine as a head coach. <laughs> I think that's a good point. Well, they've related well to Tom O'Brien. And... Uh, there's no way he's going to let them quit, but they haven't showed any of that at any point. Philip Rogers and Dez White back deep. It's taken by Rogers. Rogers pushes White and gets his blocker, but that wasn't too effective. He wound up going backwards. Adam Newman just stripped White off there and broke Rogers back. 
Now, next Sunday, beginning at 12.30 Eastern, CBS Sports rolls into the fast lane with one of NASCAR's hottest events, the Sears Die Hard 500, featuring defending champion and overall points leader Jeff Gordon. He'll try to hold off a star-laden field, the Sears Die Hard 500, live from Talladega next Sunday right here on CBS Sports. Penalty on the kickoff return. I think he should have to catch with his glove. During the return, illegal block in the back by the return team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Looked to me like the illegal block was by Phillips on his own man, White. <laughs> Let's have a look at it and see. Yeah. I'm not sure this is Alphonse and Gaston or Abbott and Costello or, what, or what. White here. Say, you okay, push, you go here. <laughs> Dez, you take that hit because I don't want any parts of it, man. <laughs> the freshman, White, taking the hit. They're back up to the sixth. That is Philip Rogers. And another flag down. Got out to about the seven-yard line. Uh, to the eleven-yard line, pardon me. Did we still have a ball game here? This is where BC's really got to bear down. 35-14. Five-yard penalty on the defense from the end of the run. Repeat first down. That's just the inadvertent face mask five-yard penalty. First down. They're going to spot it at the 16-yard line, just inside the 16 of Georgia Tech. Tim, they have a shot here. You know, you have them pinned back inside the 20. You've got to step up and make a play. There's plenty of time. Joe Hamilton with a baseball hat on on the sideline. Sean continues at quarterback. Oh, my goodness. Willits makes the stop. And let's go down to David Logan on the sideline. All right, thanks, Tim. You know... Georgia Tech fans should recognize this gentleman sitting to my left here. This is the great Rock Perdoni. Rock played at Georgia Tech back in 1970, All-America, and uh, you're here now watching your team. They're looking pretty good this afternoon. They're looking great, and uh, this is a good Boston College football team. As you know, they beat West Virginia uh, a week or two ago, so uh, I, this is saying a lot for Georgia Tech handling D.C. as they are today. Now, your brother in front of you, Joe, you got to be happy. Your son, Joe Jr., just got into the football game. How's he looking? We're very proud. We're very proud. And Georgia Tech looks great today. Rock you, Rock, you look like you're still in pretty good shape. Uh, you think you can go a couple rounds out here with these guys, a few snaps? I don't really think so. These guys are getting bigger and faster every year, and uh, they've got way beyond what I can handle. All right, it's good seeing you again. Thank you very much. All right, Rock Perdoni, Tim, back to you. Thanks, David. The first <laughs> down picked up by Charles Wiley, and indeed, Joe Perdoni, the sophomore from Wellesley, Mass. That's why the family's here. They're from this area near Boston, 6'4", 270-pounders in at left guard. And he said he only needed like 68 tickets for this game. So <laughs> it's like the whole town of Wellesley. First down, Ramblin' Wreck. And the shot. Trying to lead the rush, can't do it. He's dropped by Eric Stores and Chris Hovan. Eric Stores is just a, a relentless, relentless football player. I really think he, number 51, left side of the screen. Watch him working on the tackle. Does a good job with the rip technique. He even gets held and falls back in to make the play. I think he's got a, a future in the NFL because he has good skills, not great skills, but he's just an above-average hustler and a relentless defender. Eight sacks coming into this game. Got two here, so ten on the season to lead the NCAA. Brandon Shaw. Shaw running effectively. And the ball came loose, but I believe after the whistle. Boston College wants the ball. It was knocked loose by Eric Stores, but it may have occurred after play was whistled dead. Yeah, the, the referees are both marking the 28-yard line as the, the where it's down, and that's where it would be. Georgia Tech's ball. Short of the first down by about two yards at the 28-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. I thought he almost lost it early on the strip. You can see BC's coach to strip the football. That ball came loose. That ball did come loose. Yes, I'm sorry, did. folks. I, I was wrong. I thought it came late, but that certainly, unless well, the whistle hear, blew. But the, the whistle blew, I'm quite sure. But, but he was still going Yes, forward. he was. It shouldn't have blown. That's absolutely right. <laughs> Quick absolutely whistle. Absolutely right. So it's third and a little more than a yard. Good play. And a loose ball again. Now, it's a question here of who jumped first. 
I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen. They were doing the hard count, trying to get him offside. As soon as BC jumped in the neutral zone, the center, Craig Page, snapped the ball. It'll be offsides on Boston College. Well, that's a, unless the possibility also exists that Georgia Tech may have moved first, even though they were trying to do the hard count, they may have moved first, drawing Boston College over. Yeah, the, co the coaching point there, as soon as they get any kind of flinch from the defense in the neutral zone, you snap it right away, and that's what Page did. Yep. It is offside Boston College. Offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Watch here offside. and here. Real hard count, and no they question. both jumped, and Page snapped the ball. That's just a heady play by Craig Page, who has played ev literally every snap of every game this season. He's not been out of a game yet. The junior from Jupiter, Florida, transfer from Louisville back in 95. Smart play. First down. Now at the 34-yard line of Georgia Tech. Shot, some difficulty, gets away from one man, throws it out of bounds. General direction. The wide receiver off the right side, Conrad Daniels, number six. That was a smart play by the quarterback, Shaw. He got away from the blitz, stores, and had the presence of mind just to throw it in the third row. I like that play. They picked the flag up. That'll leave second and 10 for the Yellow Jackets, still in command of this game, 35 to 14. 19 seconds left in the third quarter. Backup quarterback Brandon Shaw took over early in this quarter. Joe Hamilton, here's some running room for Philip Rogers, and Rogers, good hard running all the way down to the 41 yard line of Boston College, but a flag on the play, and that's way back upfield, a 25 yard gain. And it may be brought back. So that's nice running by Rodgers, but I've seen more and more poor tackling in college football this year than I've ever seen in my life. He ran through about three arm tackles on that 25-yard run. And it is a an offensive holding call against Georgia Tech. So that brings that one back. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. Well, they're giving B.C. every opportunity here to try to try and climb back into this game, and B.C. has yet to take advantage of it. All spotted at the 33-yard line as the quarter will come to an end. So at the end of three at Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, the score is 35 to 14. Georgia Tech will return right after this message and a word from your local station. A look at the gothic beauty of Gasson Hall here on the campus of Boston College as uh, twilight starts to settle in on the city of Boston under cloudy skies. And it's been cloudy for the Eagles who trail 35 to 14. Now, I'm not sure, but I think they hold classes in that building. <laughs> yes, well, I wouldn't ask if you know, even though you did spend four years here, I'm told, some Five. time ago. Five. Five. Oh, it took you that long to get out. No, I graduated in <laughs> four, but took a couple grad <laughs> courses. <laughs> Brandon Shaw, that's almost picked up. Intended for Conrad Daniels and tipped en route. Oh, boy, George White had a chance to make a touchdown. Quinton Lee on the second play of the offensive series of Boston College opened the game. 76 yards for a short-lived 7 to nothing lead. Then Philip Rogers scored from six yards out. Joe Hamilton on a beautiful fake on the option play ran 61 for a score. Wiley got the first of two to make it 21 to 7. And then the second one from three yards out made it 28 to 7. They're down and 11 here. Georgia Tech. Pressure on Brandon Shaw. And that one is picked up. One handed grab by George White. Well, he didn't, he didn't uh, miss the second one after a 
A good try a play earlier. He one hands the interception for the Eagles. Now, he made two consecutive great plays. The first one he didn't finish, but this one he had the ability to finish. Good job. The quarterback, Shaw, should never throw the ball with this kind of lead. Just throw it in the 10th row. But look at the break on the football. The catch by George White. BC still in the football game. It's 44 yard. Look at the catch. Look at this catch. That's a great shot of it right there. So Boston College takes over first down at the 44-yard line of Georgia Tech. Amari Walker, senior running back, back from his sprained knee injury suffered in the West Virginia game. Gets three or four yards on first down. And going back to our scoring summary, Harvey Middleton, a 28-yard touchdown reception on a perfect strike from Joe Hamilton. And then Scott Dragos, a two-yarder from Scott Mutrin get Boston College back to 35 to 14 and that's where we stand. Down. Takes, rolls right, side arms it to the tight end, that's Gregos. Got about uh, three yards on that play. I have the same comment. If you're going to throw the football to Dragos in the flat like that, you might as well do it as soon as you come off the fake and he's got some separation. Give him a chance to catch it and run with it rather than that late. I believe third and about two for the Eagles. Trying to get to 35 to 21 with a major score here. 13-35 to go. We're in the fourth quarter. He's been the quarterback for the injured man, Hasselbeck. Last week's loss. Cincinnati Bearcats. He's gone all the way. That is incomplete, intended for Omari Walker. He had a little heat on him, rushed his pass as Kofi Smith with a corner blitz came in and pressured Mutrin, rushed his throw. I've never seen so many corner blitzes in one game in my life. That seems to be the package today devised by defensive coordinator Dave Huxtable. This is a critical play right now. Fourth and just under two. They need a conversion here. Do they have how much confidence do they have in their running game here? I think they're going to throw the ball up for three or five step drop or a fake walk. They did convert one earlier. They're one for three on the year going forward on fourth down. They're going to throw. Pressure on Mutrin just gets it off. Incomplete intended for Dragos. And the Eagles will have to give it up. This offense is predicated on five steps and release the football. One, two, three, four, five. Crittenden was open early. He holds on to the football too late. And at that point, it gives him time to respond up on Dragos. That was a critical fourth down play. If BC converts and puts points on the board, there's plenty of time left. Pressure came from Tony Robinson on to Mutrin, the quarterback. Georgia Tech gets the ball back. They have the lead, 35 to 14 at the 35 yard line. Of the Yellow Jackets and Philip Rogers finds running room off tackle. Pickup of nearly eight yards for Philip Rogers. We want to remind you next Saturday at three o'clock you'll see either Notre Dame and Pittsburgh or Georgia and Tennessee, number 18 against number nine. All begins at three o'clock Eastern time, beginning with Jim Nance, Lou Holtz, and Craig James on college football today. See, pass run has been effective uh, in both categories. I'm really looking forward to getting down to Knoxville, Tennessee next week and seeing that Georgia-Tennessee game. Georgia, for the first time in years, had four consecutive home games to start the season. If they beat Mississippi State at home today, they go into that game number 4-0 uh, and oh, and probably about number 12-15 to 15 in the country. Could be a great showdown. Philip Rogers got the first down to the 46-yard line of Georgia Tech. Two setbacks, motion behind the ball. There's Des White. And again, that same play and a lot of running room for Philip Rogers. Pedro Serino forced him out of bounds. They found something over there on the left side with that play. Tech has got, yards. Tech's got a load at fullback. Watch Wilder on the corner. Number four caught um, Carlton Rowe. The redshirt freshman just pushes him out, 250 pounds. Rowe's got to be a lot tougher at the point of attack than he was right there. Ed Wilder, the freshman from Washington, Georgia, they really like him. 
That's Hovan, the nose guard, one of their better players. Looks like he re-injured that ankle. Roger this time is dropped behind the line of scrimmage by Steve Martin, the freshman linebacker. Now there's the uh, defensive star, Hovan, out of the uh, ball game on the sideline. Sophomore, 282-pounder. Can't have him out of there too long. He's a typical Boston College nose guard. Tough as nails, quick. I think he's got a great future ahead of him, a la Freddie Smurlis, Joe Nash. Let's not, not forget Mike Ruth, won the Outland Trophy here at Boston College. It's been a great tradition of nose guard. Second and 12, Adam Grace is in there to replace Hovan at the moment, number 92. Brandon Shaw. That's incomplete. Intended for uh, Conrad Daniels. There's those three guys you mentioned. They're a pretty classy group. Well, I played with two of them. Freddie was a year ahead of me at Boston College. Had as good ability as a, a down lineman as I ever saw in my life. Weighed 290 quick, as you can imagine. Joe Nash was the opposite. Kind of heavy set. Didn't look good in the weight room, but he just played 14 years for Seattle Seahawks. Stanford has opened it up on Notre Dame. 17 to 9. It was 10 9 and a half in that game. Shaw, his first completion in five tries to Conrad Daniels, the junior wide receiver from Valdosta, Georgia. Number six, short of the first down. Brandon Shaw is not afraid to throw it into traffic. Wasn't there. He played a lot last year. As a matter of fact, he and Hamilton split time about 50-50, so this is not some untested rookie out there. And it, It's really good to get some reps to some of your backup guys because they had three nail biters their first three games with no backup back to play. Brandon Shaw Jr. from Marietta. Has to be fullback. Wilder, no score. And Wilder, touchdown. The freshman from Washington, Georgia. That play unfolded perfectly. And this big freshman fullback that they have primarily as a blocker has shown he can catch the ball and move it some. A 32-yard score. Well, the motion by the Georgia Tech offense caused some confusion in the secondary. George White, the safety, didn't get there. He's wide open. The quarterback throws the ball on time. The missed tackle by Tolfrey, and it's all over. The big red shirt, excuse me, the true freshman, Ed Wilder, 6'2", 250, dances in. Breaks for the point after, and Georgia Tech increases its lead. Now on top. 42 to 14 over Boston College. Watch what happens when what motion can do to a defense. Wilder starts in motion, but then comes back this way and into the flat. The safety, White, and the linebacker don't expand with him. And look what happens when he goes out into the flat. There's nobody anywhere near. White stays right where he is. He doesn't expand. Blount doesn't expand. One, two, three step, throw it on time. You can't get to him if you don't expand back with the motion. That's just sloppy football by BC's defense and a great job by Tech's offense. Hey, bro, you know how we feel about you, baby. We miss you, baby. We go party last night in the hotel. Well, there's Wilder with a little uh, message for friends or family. Freshman showed some good hands catching that football, too, out of the backfield, big fullback. Crittenden and Jermaine Walker are the deep backs on the kickoff. Jermaine Walker takes it right at the one, and he's going to run it. And gets only to the 15 before he's taken down by Curtis Holloman. Coming up on Monday here on CBS, don't... Stephen Bochco series, and he's had a lot of winners. So look forward to watching that all season long on CBS. Coach Tom O'Brien trying to keep a good face on things down there, but his club down 42 to 14 at home here. No ball to two and three. Amari Walker. First down. Good running by Walker out to the 32-yard line. A 15-yard pickup. Troy Tolbert. Number 25, reserve safety made the tackle. O'Brien's not going to panic. Right back to isolation. 74, Brzezinski pulls into the hole. Good lead block by the fullback. And Walker does what he does best. Read the hole, make the cut, get your pads low, and get yards. 10-12 to go. All of the uh, backups are on the field in the secondary of Georgia Tech. Kobe Smith, Troy Tolbert, John Myers, and Reggie Wilcox. Eugen rolls left. He's got a man wide open out there. Crittenden. 
Crittenden, the sophomore receiver, steps out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Another 15-yard gain and a first down. But I like what Utrin did there. I got on him earlier about not throwing the football on time. He came off the bootleg fake and delivered it, showcased his arm, and threw it on time. There is a flag on the play right at the sideline. Referee Jack Childress with the call. He go against Tech. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, a little extra hit at the sideline on Crittenden, evidently. <laughs> I'm not sure if O'Leary's mad at his player or the ref. Here we are at the very end of the play. Crittenden still fighting forward, and at the very end, number 48 jumps in there on top. That's Matt Miller, a true freshman. Maybe a little over-exuberant, but he certainly didn't kill anybody there. First down, D.C. Omari Walker picks up about three, and Georgia Tech with a big lead, 42-14, to 14, but Boston College driving here. Nine thirty remains here in the fourth quarter. Georgia Tech in control. Tom O'Brien, the Boston College coach in his first season here, a two and two mark coming into this game, but Ramblin' Wreck in control of things. A loose ball on the hit. And still a scramble for it. One yellow jacket had a clean shot at it, but lost control of it. So let's see who comes out of the pile. Good hit by Witherspoon that jar him out of the pocket like that. Now the officials saying, come on, guys, clean up the pile here. I know who's got the ball. <laughs> Let's see if he does. They, I think they're giving it to BC, but Robertson came up with a football from Tech. They had two good shots out of it, because they had one clean shot. There's Witherspoon from behind. The ball comes loose. He pokes it out. Great job by Witherspoon. And it looked to me like they got to come up with a football here. I, it's one leg. Everybody's trying to be, pick it up and run it in for a touchdown. Tardio runs in late. Yeah, Chris Edwards had a clean shot out of it. Sure again, he just didn't sputter it. Still Boston College ball. Third down and ten. Houston rolling right this time. And that one upfield intended for Harding. And there may be an interference call there against Reggie Wilcox. He reached in front trying to bat the ball down. May have interfered. Wilcox is the backup field corner. Finally getting some reps covering Dennis Harding. And they will call it against Georgia Tech. George O'Leary against Tom O'Brien in Boston Irish uh, here. This is, uh, <laughs> this is kind of a fun matchup. But I loved his line when he went in to play Notre Dame the season opener. Let's get the call first. Pass interference on the defense. First down. O'Leary was trying to do everything he could to not have his team be in awe, playing the Irish in their home opener in the new stadium and the whole ball of wax down there. And O'Leary said, look, you know, he said, I don't know what we should be so concerned about. He says, I'm more Irish than all the guys on their team. <laughs> <laughs> and Georgia Tech did a great job. They could have won that game. Should have won. Omari Walker. He's up about six or seven. You bring up a very important point, and everybody we talked to this week, all the coaches, all the players said the same thing. The Notre Dame loss was an important learning experience for them. They were a little bit overawed. There are a bunch of young guys. O'Leary said, listen, we got to learn how to win. We've learned how to lose around here. Now we've got to learn how to win. So Notre Dame was a loss. Then they beat Wake Forest late, and they come back and beat Clemson again late. This is a battle-tested team, four names in the season. They're pretty good, too. Yep. Second and five. Neutron. Greco nearly dropped the ball. He had some running room, but he was fumbling the ball. So he did the smart thing. He made sure he didn't drop it. Instead went down to the turf and hung on. We're going to have a hold, though, and I saw the, it, was, it was either LaRose or Bush Palazzo. I'm not sure which. Gregos had the first down yardage, so that's a blow to BC again. It was on the back side. I saw the hand come away from the body, and the refs saw the same thing, and they're going to bring it back. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat, second down. Well, Noah LaRose is their right tackle, number 64. Got called a little bit earlier. Let's check and see what happens. Look at the left hand right there on number 94, Dan Witherspoon. No question about that call. Utrin in the shotgun, second and 20. Quick flare out, a little flanker screen, but it's dropped by Jermaine Walker. 
Walker started to run before he had control of the ball. And we want to remind you, after the game, our college football coverage rolls on with CBS Sportsline. You'll get scores, uh, scores, highlights, breaking news, and all the individual team pages for all 112 Division I-A schools. You can spend days there. Don't forget <laughs> to cast your vote in our top 25 team fan poll. It's all out there in cyberspace, folks. CBS.sportsline.com. We've spent days here, and by the way, what is a sport? I'm not sure, but okay. it's there. If you okay. check that webpage, you're going <laughs> to find out what it is. Mutron rolling left. Incomplete. Crittenden. Unable to hold on with coverage by Matt Miller, reserve linebacker, number 48. And Crittenden had separated himself from Miller if the ball was delivered on time. Now here's a fourth down and about 20, and they're going to punt the football. George O'Leary saying, uh-uh, nobody goes deep. We're just playing our base defense. We're playing our base defense. DC's not going to fake it here because it's way too obvious. You either go for this or you don't. Oh, you're going to pitch balls on the 40, you know. 35. Excuse me, 35-yard line. Nobody's deep. They're just going to play base defense here. Trying to angle to the corner, did a good job. Got it down to the 13-yard line, bounced back up a yard. Let's see where they spot it. Just inside the 15, a 20-yard punt. And we'll be back with Georgia Tech on top. NASDAQ College Football on CBS is sponsored by Oldsmobile and your local Oldsmobile retailers. Microsoft, where do you want to go today? And by Dean Witter. There are many ways to measure success. We measure it one investor at a time. Well, after all of our football tonight on CBS, it's America's Night of Television. Tune in for Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, followed by Early Edition, and then Walker, Texas Ranger. That's all tonight on CBS. And a big Saturday night lineup, and we hope you'll stay with us all evening long. First down, Georgia Tech at their own 15, following the 20-yard punt. getting his first carry. Junior from Amityville, New York. 6'2", 220 pounds. Remember, uh, Georgia Tech without Charlie Rogers, their tailback out with an ankle. And, of course, we've talked a lot about the Boston College injuries, both on offense and defense. They have really been brutalized and have had to go today uh, without Mike Cloud, who stepped in so well when Amari Walker went down against West Virginia. And, of course, Matt Hasselbeck, their starting quarterback, unable to go today. And they're starting flanker Anthony DeCosmo. Holloman again. Tech's got a whole new offensive line in the game, and that's only significant because Craig Page, the center, Jason Burks, their left guard, and Ken Salaj, their left tackle, the team had missed a total of one play all season. So it's a chance to move, work some other people in, a chance to give the young guys a little chance to get a taste of big-time college football. Saw Joe Hamilton signaling in the plays. And the baseball hat on the sideline. We've got second and ten here. Shaw, the quarterback. It's Holloman again. Holloman with a flag down. Digs for about four. Up to the 31-yard line. Could be a hold against the Yellow Jackets. against Georgia Tech. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat second down. So we talked about how important today was because they go right back into the ACC again. Then North Carolina State, a tougher team this year, and then they go right in the middle of it. At Florida State, North Carolina, at Virginia. Those three weeks really ultimately will detail the bottom line of this schedule. I think they're going to be tough for anybody. Georgia Tech, obviously Florida State, very powerful team. North Carolina strong. There's a near fumble, but Holman gathers it in and breaks loose. Well, they're going to mark it, I believe, just before the marker he stepped up. 
For an update, let's uh, check in again with Jim Nance in New York. Well, Timmy, it didn't take number one Florida long to pounce. They returned the opening kick for a touchdown. Bo Carroll and then Fred Taylor from three yards out. 14-0 Gators midway first quarter against Arkansas. Back to Boston College. Oh, man, the Gators are tough. And that Fred Taylor, I mean, that guy is going to be a great, great player, both in college and pro ranks. He, he's he got it all. That tremendous speed and size, catches the ball, good moves. Boy, he's a good-looking running back. I was really hoping that this year in the SEC... Offside on the defense. Penalty is refused. Third down. Now, I was hoping that some, some of the SEC teams might catch up to Florida a little bit this year to be more competitive with them, but the way they played against Tennessee, what they're doing to Arkansas, what they've literally done to everybody this year, you know, I, I think there's still a big separation in that SEC. There's Florida and then not exactly. <laughs> that nine offside for Boston College. Third and less than a yard, and Holman running hard. Georgia Tech getting him some good work in the junior delivering. Curtis Holloman. Now, they've got a lot of substitutes in there, and including uh, the 360-pound rookie tackle, number 74, John Carmen, 6'8", 360 pounds from Waldorf, Maryland. George O'Leary told a funny story about him when he was recruited. He went up there to talk to his dad, and his dad said, you know, okay, I like your story, and I'm, I'm going to direct my son to go to Georgia Tech. So O'Leary went back to Georgia Tech. A few days later, his father called. Carmen's father called George and said, when can you take him? The coach said, what do you mean? He said, you know, I want to stop feeding him. You can have him now. You don't have to wait till the start of spring practice. <laughs> That's Holloman. That's a big old boy for a sophomore. Yeah, red shirt sophomore, I should say. <laughs> so his, his dad was uh, happy to turn him over to be fed at Georgia Tech. But my favorite part of the story, as any coach knows, when you get a verbal commitment, you're still a little nervous. And when the phone rang and it was Mr. Carmen, he thought, oh, no, we're going to lose him. Because right. Penn State was coming in late. Maryland was coming in. He thinks we're going to lose him. And Mr. Carmen says, get him out of here. I can't <laughs> feed him anymore. 360 pounds he is now. John Carmen, second and a long five. Holloman. Another couple of yards. Georgia Tech just grinding it out here with 4.28 to go. Good work for Holloman and the subs on that offensive line. And they have done what they wanted to do. What they talked to us about last night, Joe Hamilton and Harvey Middleton and their conversation with us saying, you know, we know how important it is. We, we think we should beat this team. We've got to come up and do it. We can't slip back from our good, tough win over Clemson. Yeah, I was impressed. And the same thing with Rodgers and Brooking. They, everybody was talking about that. Three down. Hard running there by Virgil Johnson getting his opportunity. Second string fullback, a sophomore from Fayetteville, North Carolina. And don't forget, Tim, this team started out 4-1 and one last year and ended up losing a several close games in the second half of the schedule. <laughs> Brook, he's he loved him up, naturally, and a big smile on his face. Such a serious guy, you know, that Brookie. He's got the game face on all the time. Now he can enjoy the fruits of victory. First down, Yellow Jackets at the 35-yard line. Holloman again, and the Eagles are waiting for him on the corner. He is dropped there. Leading the charge, Pat Feltz, number 10. But I, I think you can see the added maturity with Tech this, this year. They went through it last year, 4-1, and one, end up 5-6. and six. This week, every single one we talked to said, from Monday on, Tim, every person we talked to said, we took one huge step forward against Clemson. We can't afford to take two back now. behind the right guard picks up about five Boston College's Eagles came in here at two and two they have Virginia Tech next that's a tall order and on CBS October 18th they play Miami I think Tech lost today though out of conference which was an am I, I saw one of the scores throw by that's amazing Virginia Tech can't lose the game they lost today against 
Miami of Ohio. They're down at five for the Yellow Jackets here at the 30-yard line. That's Philip Rogers. He's running backs for the Yellow Jackets. Uh, they're not taking the rest of the night off. They're running hard, taking hits, and they're still driving ahead. There's Matt Hasselbeck. You see the look of disgust on his face. Uh, the starter unable to go today because of the injured thumb. He was one to talk to. He was a fine young guy. There's Captain Harvey. 24-17. There's a game Virginia Tech can't possibly lose, and they did. They were ranked in the top 15 in the country. Another blow, blow for the Big East. Fourth down and about a yard and a half. They're going to go for it here. And Holloman is stacked up by Brooke Keel, the reserve linebacker. And we have a timeout with the score 42 to 14. Georgia Tech 117 to go. Well, don't forget, right after the end of this game, we'll be going to our college football today post-game show. Jim Nance, Craig James, and Lou Holtz stay with us. 42 to 14. And Tim Hasselbeck is in the quarterback. The redshirt freshman brother of the starter, the injured Nat Hasselbeck. Clean up things here with the final 117. Getting a few plays in here as Boston College takes over on downs at their own 27-yard line. Georgia Tech on top, 42 to 14. Give us to Quinton Lee. He grinds it out for about three. Executive producer of CBS Sports is Terry Ewart. Coordinating producer of NASDAQ College Football is Craig Silver. Today's game produced by Bob Monsbach, directed by Kathy Barreto. Coordinating producer of college football today is Eric Mann. College football today was directed by Bob Matina. The associate director of today's game is Jim Rickoff. The broadcast associates Tom Capola and Fred Johnson. The technical manager is Bob Jamison. The technical director is Steve Gorsuch. And the audio supervisor is Bernie Sweeney. We thank them all. Oh. <laughs> and Hasselbeck's first pass just off the mark. Flag down in the backfield. That was almost like the immaculate reception. It could have been off Walker into Lee's hands and see you later. Hasselbeck's first career pass right through the hands of defensive back Troy Tolbert, then through the hands of Jermaine Walker. Quit and catch the football. You got another touchdown. <laughs> it would have been wiped out anyway. The flag is against Boston College, and they march it back. The offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. Brings it back to the 15-yard line. A holding penalty, 34 seconds remains, and there's brother Matt looking on from the sideline at his younger brother, Tim. Tim could start for this team defensively. He wants to be a quarterback. That's what Matt told us yesterday. He went to Coach O'Brien and said, uh, you know, uh, how about moving to defense? And Tim said, no, I think I can start next year at quarterback, and I want the opportunity to try for it. Quinton Lee got back to the line of scrimmage, and the clock is counting down here as victory will go to the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. They will move to three and one, and Boston College will fall to two and three. Quinton Lee almost broke loose, and zeros are up. So the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets win on the road, head back for ACC competition. George O'Leary's team well prepared, both by the coaching staff and with their own attitude to come in here and beat Boston College at home. For David Logan and Mike Mayock, I'm Tim Ryan saying so long from Alumni Stadium where the final score, 42 to 14 for Georgia Tech. We'll be joining Jim Nance, Lou Holtz, and Craig James after this.